They have featured the great comeback in the ninth inning. And Mark Johnson, the coach for Texas A&M, and he's been there before. He's been with some veteran outfits in college baseball. He has really brought this program to the top of college baseball. He really has, Bill. And Johnson this season is a different Mark Johnson than you have seen through the years. And you see that a lot of times in guys who press so very hard to get their programs on top and among the national leaders. And Mark has done that. He's done an excellent job with this ball club, and right now he's got everything going for him in College Station. And you really have something to talk about when you talk about these two teams. Great tradition, and they have it on both sides. Let's check the defense out now for Texas. Texas will be the home team tonight. Clay King will be at first base. He's a freshman out of Houston. David Tollison will be at second. Steve Bethay, the veteran at shortstop, and Craig Newkirk at third base. In the outfield, Arthur Butcher in left, Lance Jones in center. They can go and get it. And Gene Taylor will be in right field. Doug Pettit will be catching for Texas. And on the mound for Texas will be Trent Turner. Turner is 1-0 on the season. He's only pitched five innings. In fact, he did most of his pitching for Texas when he was a freshman. And right now, for Turner, he's in a tough situation, Bill Little, because he'll be facing a tough lineup of Aggies, and he hasn't had that much experience this year. Well, two things happen when you get in the loser's bracket in a tournament. You have to come out of it, and as we pointed out last night and again this afternoon through the day, you got to win three ball games if you're going to win the tournament if you lose the game last night, which the Longhorns did. Turner's got to come through. He'll be facing the likes of the Aggie lineup, Kirk Thompson, Terry Taylor, Knobloch, Byington, Albright, Duke, Easley, Newman, Witt. Top to bottom, an Aggie lineup that uh, hits 342 as a team. So Mark Johnson would like to end it tonight. If Texas wins, they would go to a second championship game tomorrow afternoon, and he would rather end it right here. Well, here we go with the championship game, and to call the action for you, Bill Little. In last night's ball game, the Aggies were the visitors. They jumped on the Longhorns for four runs in the first, and now Turner's first pitch of the ball game is outside to Kirk Thompson, and it is one ball and no strikes. Thompson at 377 on the season. He was 0 for 5 in the game against Texas. Grounded to the shortstop of Hay. That will be in time. And there is one man down. Trent Turner, a junior out of Arlington, had a great beginning for Texas when he went out and beat a good Arizona State team in Tempe as a freshman. He struggled with arm trouble last season and again this fall. He's a very good student, one of the academic all-conference type selections, and has pitched very well in recent practices. Terry Taylor, the Aggies' leading home run hitter, takes the pitch outside for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. The junior from Houston at 344 on the year, but with some big numbers in the extra base department. Eight doubles, two triples, and 17 home runs. All line foul out of play, and it is one ball and one strike. What I was making a minute ago about trying to come out of the loser's bracket, first of all, you got to scramble in your pitching depth. And the other thing, as we talked in the pregame, you are coming off of an afternoon ball game when your team is going to be pretty wilted. And usually for about the first five innings, you live on adrenaline of being in the finals. And after that, you have to see if you've got a big enough lead to hang on. Last year in a similar game, Texas got a great pitching performance from Preston Watson that vaulted the Longhorns into the championship game the next day. I think the key for Turner here in the early going, he got a ground out against Thompson. Maybe get a couple of ground outs or get into the flow of the game and get relaxed. He's a big, tall, strapping youngster. He's pitched against some good competition. Well, I was going to say, he usually has pretty good control. And again, has pitched mainly in inter-squad ball games for Texas this year. He's been in only the three games that you mentioned. The job, of course, for Taylor is to get on base ahead of the big bats. And, and he just did it. And he did. The 3-2 pitch puts Taylor to first base for the Aggies. Taylor has... Seven stolen bases. He has not run uh, as much as the other Aggies have. And the reason you don't run very much is you got Knobloch, Byington, and Albright coming up behind you. This is Knobloch, who a 
at 373 and seven home runs and 53 RBIs, a junior from Houston Bel Air. Slow change is a strike, and it's 0-1. Turner, his best year, as I say, as a freshman, he was 2-1 with a 3-1-5. Did not have a record in 88. One pitches inside for a ball, and it's one ball and one strike. Tom McKinney is behind home plate in the ball game. Same four umpires that have called the tournament, and they continue their rotation around. Tell you, these guys have spent some time in the sun, as the afternoon games have really been wilting all three days. Well, sometimes when you see a move like that, it means a pitcher's holding back a better one. See if Turner has any move to first base. Aggie numbers in all offensive statistics, Bill, are really impressive. 121 stolen bases as a team, a 342 batting average. They have hit 80 home runs. Chopper could be two at the bag as Tolleson for one, and the throw to first will be the double play. So Turner gives up a base runner and then silences the threat in the first inning. There are no runs on no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We will go to the bottom of the first inning. The Aggies nothing, and Texas coming to bat on Home Sports Entertainment. And as we set the defense for Texas A&M. Mike Easley will be at first base. Terry Taylor at second. Chuck Knobloch at shortstop. John Byington at third base. In the outfield for AM, Jim Newman in left. Kurt Thompson, Andy Duke, and catching will be Eric Albright. And on the mound will be a freshman, Ronnie Allen. Nine and one on the season with a 425 ERA. Mark Johnson talks about his young pitcher in a clutch situation. Well, Ronnie Allen's going to throw for us. He's a true freshman from uh, Kirkland, Washington, and uh, he's been across the line for us every week in the Southwest Conference and done a good job for us. He's been our number two pitcher uh, the seven-inning ball game, and so he's got a nine-inning ball game he's looking at right now, and, uh, you know, we're hoping to get six or seven good ones out of him. Last time I told him that, he gave us nine, so I hope he'll do that. Allen's only defeat came against the University of Texas here as... Kirk Gressendorfer was the winner in the ball game that opened the three-game series. The Aggies, since that time, have taken three in a row from Texas. And you take a look at Lance Jones and David Tolleson, Bryant, Butcher, King, Newkirk, Taylor, Bethea, and Pettit. Jones will lead it off and takes the first pitch outside for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Texas. Went back to the hotel after the afternoon game and spent about two hours as that one was over around 4.10 or so. They returned to the ballpark at 6.15. Jones finished the day this afternoon against Arkansas with two straight base hits. There's a strike from Allen. And it will even at one ball and one strike. Bill Allen has a good fastball. He likes to cut it a little bit. He can run it in on hitters. And a slur, which is kind of a halfway between a slider and a curve ball, but he uses that mainly to keep him off balance. Throws around 84, 85 miles an hour. When he opens up a little too much, then he gets in trouble. But if he stays within himself, he's an awfully good pitcher with an active arm. 2-1 pitch is up for ball. And it runs to three balls and one strike to the Longhorn leadoff man. I don't care how talented, how poised you are, this has to be a little bit, there has to be a lump in his throat right now in a championship game, and they give you the baseball. I'll tell you one thing, Bill, the fielders are getting a little bit of a break. As the sun is dropping, we've got overcast skies. There's that one is popped back and out of play. Normally, this time of day, there is a very sharp sun line that cuts across from third base across the mound toward first. But cloud cover that uh, has moved in from the northwest has cut that down. And while the lights have yet to take a lot of effect here, it certainly is going to help the fielders as far as their scene is concerned. 3-2 again is out of play. And it will hold at three balls and two strikes to Jones. Jones on the season at 304. 
now has three hits in the tournament. He was two for five in the afternoon ball game. Is the guy the Longhorns like to get on to try to set the table? Moved into the Cleveland, moved into the leadoff position after batting in the second spot for a while when Texas was struggling with lineups. Longhorns have used 50 different lineups in the season in trying to get it all put together, and there's ball four to Jones. So far in the season, Allen with 72 innings pitched has walked 29 hitters. So Texas batting in the bottom of the first inning with uh, uh, the leadoff man on, and Tomlinson now will come up. They are already considerably better off than they were at this time last evening when they had surrendered a grand slam homer to Eric Albright, one of two that Albright hit in last night's ball game as he drove in seven runs. Pitch to Tolleson is high for ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. David Tolleson for Texas has been on a tear in this tournament. He has seven base hits in the tournament. In the afternoon game today, he was two for six. So overall, he is seven for 15 in the conference tournament, including a home run. Allen at the belt, and the pitch is again high for ball. And it's two ball and no strikes. Well, he's got to be a little nervous, and it appears that he may be overthrowing early in the game. As he calms down, that pitch will come down for him. He likes to run it down and in anyway on a right-hander. From the stretch in the 2-0 is again high for ball three. Now, Scott Bryant will be next. Albright will walk out to talk to his pitcher. Bill Bethea says, well, I'm not going to do anything or put anything on with Lance Jones until I see this youngster throw a strike. So that's obviously Mark Johnson has the take on as he looks on from the dugout. Mark has been to three College World Series with different teams before coming to Texas A&M. He was an assistant at Arizona and yeah. at Mississippi State. Mississippi State under two fine coaches there. And he's really Tom done Chandler a, here. He's really done a great job with this program here. Here's the strike. And it's three and one to Thomason. You know, a catcher will come out and say to the pitcher, now bend your back. Get on top of the ball. And you say, well, what do you think I'm trying to do? <laughs> But it does settle a pitcher down. You sometimes need somebody just to remind you of those things. Just how do you suggest I do that? Quick throw to first base, and Jones with a little lead. Darren Gustafson, the assistant coach who is close, Coach Cliff Gustafson's son, is coaching at first base. Bill Buffet at third is Cliff Gustafson. is home with wife Janie, who had surgery this morning. Throw again to first, and back is Jones. Quite a touching moment earlier in the night here when Dede Grubbs, who does such a great job on the PA here, read an announcement from Coach Gustafson and Coach Johnson concerning Janie Gustafson, and we'll try to work that in as we go along with the applause that came from the crowd here. I think it was a touching moment in college baseball and says something of the Texas and a and rivalry. Three one is high, and two batters have walked. Texas with two aboard here in the bottom of the first. And it will bring up the Longhorns big man. This is Scott Bryant. Well, he's gotten himself in a jam now with Bryant and Butcher do up for Texas. But this is where he may be able to settle down. The difference, I think, in these two young pitchers, Turner was able to go out, get a ground ball his first out, and even though he walked a batter, he got a double play ball right back to second base to get out of it. Now, Allen needs something like that to get him going. Bryant with 104 RBIs, 29 doubles, two triples, and 18 home runs, a 389 hitter. And while he is not hit for power, save for one double in this tournament, he does have six hits in the 13 at bats that he has lodged. Pitch to Bryant is up in the zone for a ball. Allen having trouble getting the ball down, which, Bill, is not the kind of way you want to be to a man like a Bryant with that wind blowing out. It's really blowing across now from right field to left field almost. Pitch has popped up. A possible play for Albright. Coming over is the first baseman and right at the on-deck circle. The catch cannot be made.
almost had a chance to get out of this. Albright was right there and looked like the ball eluded him and the little bat girls down there may have been in his way. Gentleman to the last didn't run over the ladies going for the baseball. <laughs> I know a lot of catchers who would have <laughs> if it meant getting this big guy Bryant out. Allen is sitting out there thinking why. <laughs> yeah. 1-1 one, one is the count. Pitches out of the zone for ball two, and it's two balls and one strike. The impressive statistic for Bryant, and we mentioned this this afternoon, and he promptly struck out for the 21st time, but in 239 at-bats, he has hit 18 home runs and has spanned only 21 times. And a power hitter is usually going to be more of a free swinger than that. 2-1 to Bryant, wide for ball three. Well, it looks like he's starting to aim it. He could be having some real problems now if he walks Bryant. I don't care how many big games he's pitched in, in the Pony Leagues, Babe Ruth League in high school. Now he's a freshman in college, and this is his first big, big tournament game. And he's got to be feeling a little bit of the tension. 3-1 is the hitter's pitch. It is wide for ball four, and the bases are loaded. Well, he's only thrown a couple of strikes that I can remember. He went three and two to Jones and walked in. He was three and one to Tolleson, three and one to Bryant, so you're right. And a couple of those were fouled off, mm -hmm. so he's having trouble finding that plate. Aggies with action in the bullpen as Anthony De La Cruz is up. And the pitching coach for AM, Jim Lawler, is going to go out right now and talk as you get a look at Mark Johnson on the right. And his assistant, Bill Hickey, who is there with him. Well, the calm look you see on Mark Johnson's face is the fact that he knows his ball club averages almost double digits in scoring a game. And so if he can just get this kid over the hump, and get out of this inning, even if he allows one or two runs, the Aggies are always confident that they can come back and score. Bill, I've always thought that a person is really three different people, and I think the same, the same is true of baseball teams. You are what you really are. You are what you perceive yourself to be, and you are what others perceive you to be. And in this Texas A&M baseball club's sake, first of all, they are very good. They perceive themselves to be able to come from behind and beat anybody. And the teams that they play perceive them to be able to do that just as well. Mm -hmm. Bill Bethay out to talk to Lance Jones, his man at third base. There is Jones at third. Second is David Tollison. And at first is Scott Bryant. Good speed at second and at third. And Arthur Butcher to the plate. He had a grand slam homer in the opener against Arkansas and takes the first pitch to a strike. Butcher laid off the first pitch, and Allen put it right down the chute. Well, I'm sure the instructions were they wanted to see if the young man could throw a strike before they were going to swing away at him. Oh, he poured that fastball right where Butcher would have loved it. Oh, one on the way is foul back on the screen. And it is no balls and two strikes. Last two pitches, Allen has not extended himself out where his elbow got under his arm so that he was out forcing the ball up high. All of his pitches have been high in the strike zone. Last couple of times, he's gotten on top of the ball and strided within himself. Aggies are back at double play depth. They will give up a run to get the couple of outs. Just wide of the zone for ball. And it is one ball and two strikes. Check the location on this pitch and keep in mind that our camera is not directly behind the pitcher, so we don't have a real good angle on that corner. One, two is chopped foul at the plate, and Butcher does it alive. Another thing, too, Bill, you have different kinds of umpires. In the afternoon game, a lot of these fans saw Ken Eldridge, who is a pitcher's umpire, we call him. He'll give the corners and the black part of the plate to the pitcher, and so the hitter really has to stay loose. McKinney is more of a hitter's umpire. He'll pinch the strike zone a little on the pitcher and make it a little more difficult to get that call third strike. 
Butcher with eight RBIs in the tournament. Four hits and 14 trips. Way wide for ball, and it's even. And Allen will go back to the rosin bag now. He went back. Sure doesn't want to go three and two on Butcher right now. This is Allen's pitch. Three two is it well out to center field? Going back is Thompson. That one is well hit and against the fence. One run will score. Coming to home will be Tollison. Going to third is Bryant and Texas has a two to nothing lead. That's what happens when you get behind. You walk a lot to uh, put a lot of people on the bases. We told you about Butcher before the game and how hot he is right now. He's having a tremendous tournament. He got all of that one. That was the pitch he wanted. Fastball because Allen did not want to go three and two on him. So the wildness by Allen now is making some tough decisions for Mark Johnson. Texas with a two to nothing lead as Clay King now will come to the plate. Texas with a late switch in its order. Gene Taylor, the freshman power hitter, had been in the five spot, but he was hit in the first ball game on the elbow, and his swing is a little limited, and they felt it would be better to put King in this position, and now he's up with two men in scoring position. And the pitch is ball one. De La Cruz down in the bullpen, working hard for the Aggies. Ball, Byington with a nice stop. A run will score, but he will throw out the runner at first base. It is three to nothing, Texas. Well, you won't see many finer plays than the one that John Byington just made. He's only 5'8", but he is well put together, and he gets so much notoriety about his hitting, a lot of people forget what a great third baseman he is. He only has nine errors on the season, and they've played a lot of games. Look at that arm, too. He's got a gun. Nice job by Easley, too, who was off the bag and had to get back and tag it. Craig Newkirk now has really been struggling in the tournament, has only one base hit. And swings and misses at that one. It's 0 1. One out of the runner still in scoring position. Texas with a 3 0 lead over AM here in the bottom of the first inning. And Newkirk is 1 for 11 in the tournament. with a good stop from Eric Albright and we talked in the opening there about Albright who's one of the major differences in this Aggie ball club. Well one of the keys for a pitcher in this type of competition you must get your breaking ball over at some part of the game and Allen has not that I recall been able to get that slurve over the plate so Texas is just sitting on the fastball and he's had trouble getting that over. There's ball two to Newkirk. Aggies with only five losses, only two of them at home. But again, a team that knows they can come from behind. There is Arthur Butcher, who's double played at two runs and set up another one. Pop up out of play from Newkirk, and it is even at two balls and two strikes. Last year in the regional tournament, Newkirk earned most valuable player honors when he had four home runs in the Longhorns five games in that tournament. Also hit a home run against the Aggies in the Southwest Conference Tournament up in Fayetteville, but is not known as a power hitter. Consistently around 300 most of the season. One of the veterans on the ball club, a senior out of Galveston. Grounder right back to the box, and on the play, they will throw the runner out. Butcher's going to go over to third. Well, Allen never looked at second base. Now, all he has to do is turn and look at Butcher. Once he feels the ball, I think he forgot about it. He needs to turn right here and look at Butcher. See, he put his head down. I, either he thought there were two outs, or he forgot all about Butcher. 
So the runner moves to third. He is 90 feet from home now and a wild pitch, pass ball, anything like that could allow the run to score. And Gene Taylor, who was hit by a pitch in the game against Arkansas and has injured his elbow a little bit, that pitch is up high for ball. It's one ball and no strikes. But Taylor, the sophomore from McCallum, who Cliff Gustafson inserted in the lineup in the TCU series, has three base hits in the tournament. He is three for ten. There's a strike to Taylor. Longhorns three nothing in the bottom of the first inning. Three bases on balls and a double from Butcher. There's a breaking pitch again. He just can't get it over. You notice that his catcher Albright was palms down saying settle down get that breaking ball down in the strike zone you have got to have something to offset your fastball 2 1 is the count to Taylor way inside for ball three Taylor's got to be gun shy today he already got plunked in the afternoon game he was hit twice in that first ball game you see him duck back out of the way well, again, the 3-1 hitter's pitch with Butcher over at third base. Fly ball hit to center field. Playable for Thompson, who will put it away for the third out of the inning. But Texas scores three runs. Longhorn did it with one base hit. There were no arrows, and one man was left on. We now have played an inning, and Texas a surprise leader over Texas A&M at three to nothing. At Robinson, or next year's Spurs. Hope you'll join me, Dan Cook, and David Robinson Sunday, May the 21st at the arena to watch the lottery live in the CBS NBA playoff game on the Jumbotron and enjoy a free lunch, too. Register for your chance to win a trip for two to New York with the Spurs for the NBA draft. May 21st wouldn't be a Sunday without the Express News, Dan Cook, CBS, and WOAI. The voice of the Spurs. Look for your entry form in today's paper. Well, it Bella? No, Mike. What did he say? He wants to know if we're allowed to eat these men. Mm. The world's favorite adventurer is back for more. Something we fire. Much, much more. You know who that was? Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood coffee. Paul Hogan is Michael J. Crocodile Dundee. Or nothing. Mark Johnson talked about the home field advantage here at Olsen Field before the ball game. Well, it's an amazing thing. It's kind of one of those things that grows on you. We uh, won some games early from behind, and it just seems like it's perpetuated as we continue the season. We've had, I think, eight games where we're down to our last out and we're behind, and we've won them. And so it, it's uh, been exciting. It's kept the fans in the stands and buying hot dogs and Cokes. Uh, and it's aged to coach about five years, but it's been an exciting year. They've developed a lot of character from that. And it's a good thing to have when you get into playoff time, uh, the realization that the game's not over to the last pitch. John Byington is the batter for the Aggies. A&M 37-2 at home. Their only losses, one to Texas and one to Arkansas during the regular season. And this fella up here at the plate is one of the reasons why everybody stays around. Well, what a day he had Look at uh, those stats. against Texas. Oh. He is at three of those home runs against Texas, including two to win ball games back in the regular season. There is ball three to Byington. And as Scott Bryant and Arthur Butcher are a tandem for Texas, Trent Turner is about to work himself into trouble because Eric Albright is due next for the Aggies, and he is the guy who has had the hot bat for AM in this tournament. There is ball four, and he walks him on four pitches. Sometimes with Byington, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> you know, when you're hitting 434. Byington, 12 of 14 on stolen bases. Now the Aggies are down 3 nothing. It is only the second inning. Eric Albright is the batter. I think they'll see if 
Mr. Turner now can throw strikes, first of all. Albright with 11 RBIs in the tournament. He had seven in yesterday's ball game against Texas, including two home runs. Breaking pitches a strike from Turner, and it's 0-1. But if you were going to steal, Turner would be the perfect pitcher to do it on. He's tall. He's got the big, long leg kick, long delivery to home. If you had any speed. Well, the Aggies like to run, but again, down three, you might see a hit-and-run type play put on. Got a first, and it was close. Now, he has a nice move to first. I told you in that first inning he was lulling him to sleep. That was a dandy move. All one pitches out of the zone for a ball, and it's even at one ball and one strike. It is the top of the second inning. Texas leads Texas A&M 3-0. As you get a look at Eric Albright and what a finish he has had in conference competition. Nine doubles, four triples, and 15 home runs. Breaking ball is wide. It's two balls in a strike. He now has 70 RBIs to move into second place on this ball club. Byington leads the team with 78. Two one is a strike, and it is even at two and two. Corner. It had been two years for Turner between wins until he picked up a victory against Oklahoma up in Norman. After the Longhorns had lost the series here to Texas A&M, they went immediately to Norman, Oklahoma. And won a couple of ball games in ninth innings over the Sooners, which, by the way, were eliminated from the Big Eight tournament this afternoon. Missouri and Oklahoma State are playing in the championship ball game of that tournament. And that is something of a shocker for Ena Seymour's ball club, which it hoped to be a number two seed in somebody's tournament, may drop down a bit. Albright with a grounder to Newkirk. He slips down and makes his throw, and it is not in time. And now they have ruled him out. Let's look at the replay. My fault. I called it early. Well, you, I thought he was uh, safe myself. It was kind of a slow call. You'll see that Newkirk falls down, but he keeps throwing. Mm-mm. So Byington is forced at second on the 5-4 play. And the fielder's choice allows Albright to first base. And with one down, Andy Duke is the batter. An all-conference selection, Duke at 365. Eight home runs for Andy, 333 in the tournament. Which from Turner is wide, and it is one ball and no strikes. Ball two, and it runs to two balls and no strikes. Duke, a very versatile player. He plays in the outfield, uh, of course, for Texas A&M. Has the strongest arm of any of the players on the A&M squad. And also earned an A&M Academic Achievement Award in the fall of 86. Very good student. He's another one of those Bayou Connection folks. He's from Baytown Lee as well as Byington. Mm -hmm. This ball club, from top to bottom, when you get down to the ninth man in the order, Trey Woody, he's a freshman. But the veteran players at the top are all either seniors or likely to sign professional contracts. Well, Mark Johnson may have a rebuilding job in store as he looks toward 1990. Thompson's a senior. Taylor's a junior who probably will sign. Knobloch should sign. He's a junior. Byington's a junior and wants to sign. Albright's a senior, Duke's a senior, Easley's a senior, Newman's a senior, and as I said, Whitty is just a freshman. 
think he may have to be recruiting this year. <laughs> Which is a strike, and it runs to three and one now to Andy Duke. The purpose of the conference tournament, when it was devised, and Cal Segrist had it as a brainchild, he was the Texas Tech coach. One was to establish something that the conference could use well, and there is strike two. The other was to use it as a testing ground and a proving ground to go into the regional competition. And Texas is using this tournament to try to find something it has sought all season. The Longhorns have used 18 different pitchers. And until Scott Bryant came through in the afternoon ball game with a win, the numbers had always seemed to come up empty. But this time, support for Kirk Gressendorfer appeared uh, a possibility as Bryant looked very good in the afternoon game, Bill. He really did, and Turner is making the big pitch when he needs it here. 3-2 is a breaking ball for ball four, and it, that will put Duke aboard. Albright moves to second. I think that shows you also the, the way that uh, Texas has to pitch to A&M. Breaking ball kind of gave in on him, didn't he? Didn't have a lot of confidence in his fastball. That's the respect that they have for the A&M hitting attack. That'll bring up Mike Easley, the first baseman. After last night's ball game, Clint Thomas, who has done such a great job with the Texas pitchers since 1979 for Cliff Gustafson, was talking about the fact that uh, we make mistakes on pitches and it is out of the ballpark. Another team makes a mistake against us and it's a base hit. But against the Aggies, you make a mistake and it's gone. And when you look at a team that has hit 80 home runs, that is a very significant factor. Evans at one and one as easily as a home run swing. Byington with 12 home runs. Thompson does not have one. Knobloch has seven. Andy Duke with eight. Easily with eight. Taylor with 17. Albright with 15. This ball just misses for a ball two and it's two and one. Aggies batting in the top of the second inning. They are the visiting team in the ball game, and Texas with a 3-0 lead. Arthur Butcher with a bases-loaded double to drive in two runs, and then a ground out from Clay King produced the other run. Bounces away from the catcher, Pettit, and the runner will go to third and a second. So the wild pitch from Albright, or to, excuse me, from Turner moves up Albright and Duke. Might mention here that John Prather, the Longhorns regular catcher, has spent a lot of time behind the plate in this tournament. And Bill Bethay going with the freshman receiver Pettit, who has really had very limited action in the 1989 campaign for the Longhorns. Pettit in just his 17th ball game. You know, Bill, we're seeing the reason with six bases on balls already what inexperienced pitching will do for you. Neither of these two youngsters used to this kind of competition. 3-1 is a liner right at Bethay, and that will retire easily. And there are two outs, and now a very important person for the Aggies in their Southwest Conference campaign. This is Jim Newman. Only a 313 hitter, and I use the word only advisedly, as all of the other Aggie regulars have averages above that. But Newman was Mr. Clutch in the late drive for the Aggies as they had to beat Houston two out of three and Arkansas two out of three to clinch the Southwest Conference Championship. Senior from Dallas from the right side now. And Turner's pitch is down for ball. It's one ball and no strikes. In last night's ball game, the Aggies produced 20 base runners and scored 15 of them. Texas produced 21 and scored only six. In this one, Texas has had four and has scored three. The Aggies, to this point, have had four and have not scored one. Back on the screen from Newman, and it will hold it or move to one ball and one strike. Apparently, Turner has some pretty good movement on his fastball. He's thrown it down the pipe to the last two hitters. That time, uh, Newman had some trouble coming up with it. 
Turner was an outstanding prospect coming out of Arlington High School and really did burst on the scene. In fact, when he beat Arizona State, everybody looked back to the 1984 campaign for Texas when Greg Swindell beat him. Foul ball out of play, and it's one ball and two strikes. And folks then thought that Turner perhaps would be the next Texas phenom. But it has not turned out that way. Again, did not have a record last year. He was 0-0 in the limited appearances. He's ahead of Newman at 1-2. and two. Back to the pitcher, and he'll get out of it. To King for the out, and the second inning ends with the Aggies coming away with no runs. There were no hits. There were no arrows, and there were two men left on base. So we go to the bottom of the second inning now. It is Texas 3 and Texas A&M nothing in the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament Championship ball game from College Station. For the Texas Aggies, Kurt Thompson and Bill, besides the hitting statistics, the defense of Thompson will really jump out at you. He has in right at 100 plays in the outfield committed only one error and has made some dramatic plays, in, in particular a diving catch in last night's ball game that helped in the 15 to 6 win over Texas. Yeah, he's a good one. He's been one of the mainstays of this team for a long time. This is a veteran outfit. They really feel like that they can go all the way this season. Yeah, I heard he got sick. Some Texas fans who are here to support the Longhorns in the championship game. As you look at the Texas bench, they are in the visitors dugout, but they are the home team. In the conference tournament, you go by a system that uh, the NCAA has laid out. And the Longhorns with the visitors in their last ball game. The Faye pops it up right at home plate. And Albright will put it away. Well, let's see now if that'll settle Ronnie Allen down. Looks like he got his second win, doesn't he? That was a much more effective pitch. He had it down in the strike zone. Not up high where everything was in that first inning. Doug Pettit, the Texas catcher who comes up now, has four hits in the 1989 season. Two of them are doubles and two of them are home runs. Pitch to Pettit is down and it is one ball and no strikes. Last night against the Aggies, Pettit hit one off the 375 sign in deep right center field then went for a double. Oh, Ronnie. Pitch is down for ball two and it's 2-0. and oh. Just a freshman, Pettit, one of the players of the future for Texas. He is from Houston. He's from Deer Park. He's 6-2 and 2-13. And there's the strike to Pettit. Allen has walked three batters and has given up one hit. The bases loaded double to Arthur Butcher that has put him in the three nothing hole. Down and inside to cut it for a three one count. Aggies know that they have it tomorrow. Texas must win tonight in order to force another championship ball game if they are to come away with the trophy that is given to the winner of this one. Line drive foul into the stands. And a nice hand for a fan for the grab. And so the freshman matchup has worked its way full at three balls and two strikes. Pettit wants to adjust his equipment. <laughs> Ronnie Allen all the way from Washington to College Station for the Aggies. That is Washington State. Brown 
ball to Taylor, who has it handcuffed him briefly, but will throw the runner out. Good veteran play by Terry Taylor. Stayed right in front of the ball, smothered it with his stomach. So watch the way the, the ball jumps off these aluminum bats. So you really have to be alert in the infield and can imagine on AstroTurf how much quicker it gets to the fielder than on grass. There is a difference, too, in these ball clubs. Texas used to playing on the AstroTurf at his dishwalk field. Aggies, of course, playing here at home on a very well manicured Olsen field. Leo Gertz, the groundskeeper here, does a tremendous job of keeping this facility in good shape. The rains that hit much of Texas really kind of dodged the Brazos Valley. We got some showers that forced postponement of the tournament for a day. Jones rips one out to right field on the run going back as the right fielder can't get it. Jones will go to second. He will hold there with a double. And with two men out, Texas with its second base hit, its second double of the ball game. And a man in scoring position for Tallison. Jones really jumped on this pitch. Watch where it is, right up there where he can see it, right in the old wheelhouse. This is about as far as this youngster can hit it, too. He only has one home run on the season. And he gave that one a ride. I just wonder now how far Mark Johnson's going to go with Ronnie Allen if Texas keeps chipping and chipping away. Well, he had De La Cruz up in the first inning, but now does not have anyone working. Two out here in the bottom of the second. Tallison with seven hits in the tournament and a chance for an RBI with a base hit. Here is ball one to the sophomore from Abilene, one of the few players in recent years to start as a freshman for Cliff Gustafson. Last year in the outfield and some at third base. This season he has played six different positions including his latest arrival in at second base after David Lowry was injured. As Gustafson juggled his lineup following the Arkansas series. And for the TCU series, he put Tollison, who had played at first base and in the outfield and at third. He moved him to second base for the first time. He put Clay King, who had not played first at all, at first base. And now looks like action again in the Aggie bullpen. If he loses this hitter, I think they're going to really start heating it up in that bullpen for AM. and And as De La Cruz up again, it is 3-0 to Tomlinson, and Bryant would be next. Ronnie Allen back of the mound and bending over and not feeling very good at all as you get a look at De La Cruz. The fourth walk given up by Ronnie Allen. Now you're really in a jam. Scott Bryant is due up, and Mark Johnson's going to make a move. But the problem here is if he stays with Allen any longer, and Allen, in trying to get one over, grooves it for Bryant, then all of a sudden, AM is down six to nothing. So he's going to call on De La Cruz, and it just appears that young Raleigh, Ronnie Allen did not have it tonight. Well, if there is a ball game tomorrow, Allen, while he threw a number of pitches, really worked only the two, and he would be available to come back and help if the Aggies and the Longhorns do force a championship ball game tomorrow afternoon. As De La Cruz heads to the plate, here is another of the Aggie veterans. This is a senior out of San Antonio. He went to West Ark Community College. And a nice hand for the young freshman Ronnie Allen. Well, this will be the 17th game for De La Cruz. And he is 6-1 and one on the season with a 485 ERA. And for De La Cruz, he's thrown 39 innings, given up 36 hits, walked 22 in 39 innings. That's not a good sign. But he struck out 42 hitters and 39 innings pitch. So he throws hard. If he has his control, that's obviously the key for De La Cruz. De La Cruz appeared in the three-game series when Texas and A&M played here. He pitched four innings, wound up giving up only one run, gave up three hits, but he walked three and struck out six. And 
wound up picking up the victory as the Aggies came from a five run deficit down 14 to nine with nine runs in the ninth inning to beat Texas. And De La Cruz on now trying to hold the Longhorns and with two out he will face a very important batter. And Bill, the question that you posed prior to the ball game of did pitching in the first game take something out of him? We'll find out as Bryant will be coming to the plate now. You get a look at a number of the folks who have gathered around to take a look at this one. Yeah, they've got them along the uh, outfield fences. They're jammed in here, standing room only. This ballpark holds about 5,000 fans. I would say they've got about 5,500 on hand tonight. This will be the scene of one of the regionals, of course, Texas A&M, the scene of the central region. Austin will be the scene of the Midwest region. Now, this region will start on the 25th, which will be on Thursday. The one in Austin will start on Friday. I think Bill Little worked it that way so he could play golf Thursday. I think that the, the main thing is with those two tournaments, fans throughout the state ought to take advantage of the opportunities to see some great college baseball. Boy, you bet. Dela Cruz to Bryant with runners at first and second and two out here. Drive it to the left side, but playable. And Bryant is down to win the inning. That was a big out for the Aggies, Bill. Bryant hit it on the nose. But Newman was able to drift back and get underneath it. And Texas comes away empty. There are no runs. There was a base hit. There are no arrows, and two men are left on base. We are through two innings. Texas with a 3 0 lead over the Aggies in the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament Championship. Top of the third inning, Trent Turner on the mound for Texas has not allowed a base hit so far in the game. He has walked three batters. And here we'll face Trey Whitty, Kirk Thompson, and Terry Taylor, the 9 1 and 2 hitters for the Aggies. Texas with three runs in the bottom of the first inning. Arthur Butcher with a bases loaded double drove in two. The other scored on a ground out. And that is the way our score stands now is in the third inning. Trey Whitty in his second ball game as a designated hitter takes the pitch up and in for ball. This is not a good trend. We've played an hour now. We're only in the third inning. So many bases on balls. And it's been awfully difficult for anybody to really get a roll going here. It could, as the game goes on like that, work in the favor of the Aggies. Line drive right side is going to be trouble. On the run is Taylor, and he can't get it. It will drop in for a base hit, and Woody will go to second with a double, and the Aggies have their first base hit. Isn't this game something, Bill? Uh, the Aggies have hit the ball right on the nose early in the game, but they've hit it right to somebody. Now Whitty hits it off the end of the bat, and he's standing on second with a double. Gene Taylor gave it a good run, but it was curving away from him. And that wind, we remind you, is blowing to the outfield, so it held it up, kept it from going foul. So Turner, who had to battle his way in the second inning with two men in scoring position, now works with yet another man in scoring position for the Aggies, and Kirk Thompson will be coming to the plate. Thompson is looking for his first hit against the Longhorns. He was 0 for 5 last night. As Texas tries to catch the runner Whitty at second base. Trey Whitty out of Houston Jersey Village, just a freshman. And the only freshman in the Aggie lineup, save for the starting pitcher Allen, who is no longer there. Fly ball back out of play from Thompson. And it is 0 1. Gives you an idea of how good the baseball is in the Houston area in the high school ranks. Both of these teams loaded with young players from the Houston area. Kirk Thompson with only two base hits in the tournament. <laughs> Turner misses inside for a ball. Again, the ball too. Well, just like I said about Allen a moment ago, I'll say it about Turner. 
If he doesn't get Thompson, and he ought to go after him because if you don't, you're looking at Taylor, Knobloch, Byington, and Albright right in a row. You're going right into the teeth of the Aggie power. 3-0 Texas lead. Pounding ball is going to be a base hit, and the run will score. As Tollison could not come up with it. It is a three to one ball game as Kirk Thompson produces. I thought for a moment that Tollison would get to it for just a fraction of a second. He stretched out. Didn't get down on the ball fast enough. And the only play Lance Jones had was to throw it back into second. And Bill you may see there a little of the fatigue factor that we've talked about as Tollison one of the quicker Longhorns just a step slow. They're going to appeal at third base. He's got to go into a stretch first. And he better watch the runner on first. You know, that happened earlier this afternoon in case some fans did not see the earlier game between Texas and Arkansas. Arkansas appealed at third. The pitcher, Bennett, went into the stretch, stepped off the rubber, and threw it over his third baseman's head. The Texas runner advanced to second. Taylor, the leading home run hitter for the Aggies, takes ball one, and it is one ball and no strikes. Texas with action in the bullpen is Brian Dare. The left-hander is up in a hurry. Longhorns with a 3-1 lead in the top of the third. Taylor can tie it with a swing of the bat. Quick throw to first, and Thompson is back. Thompson with 30 steals on the season. You take a look at Dare. And Doug Pettit, the catcher, is going to go out and talk to Trent Turner. And we'll also bring the veteran senior Craig Newkirk over into the conversation. Well, with the big bats coming up, there are arguments both ways for Mark Johnson. Thompson is almost a lock. Anytime he steals a base or attempts a steal to get it. He has 30, as you mentioned. He's only been caught stealing seven times. But when you have bats like Taylor Knobloch and Byington coming up, do you want to take the chance? Well, he's working against a freshman catcher. Mm -hmm. Might rattle a pitcher a little more. Turner aware. Trying to keep him close. A little bigger lead now. Two and Turner again has fallen behind Terry Taylor. Seventeen home runs for Taylor and 66 RBIs. Longhorns lead 3-1 in the top of the third. some time in the bullpen on a very humid evening. It was 91 degrees with 81% humidity at the start of the ballgame. And that is strike one with a 2-1 count now to Terry Taylor. That was a good 2-0 pitch, wasn't it? It looked like Taylor was set, sitting on the fastball, tried to pull the trigger, and that little slurve slipped in. Clint Thomas, the Longhorn pitching coach, calls the pitches for Texas. Time call. Earlier this year, they got a little upset with Dressendorfer, didn't they? Because he, he was shaking off too many signs from the bench. Texas pitchers are allowed to shake off. Yeah. Wow, this. That is even a two and two. Pitchers are allowed to shake off the calls from Cliff Gustafson and Clint Thomas. But when it happens too many times, they finally say, wait a minute, we think we know what we're doing. Runners going, caught a second of the steal. Turner had gone over to first several times, 
but he forgot about Thompson one time too many. Yeah, he never really looked at first, and Thompson had his biggest lead so far, and it was easy. No contest. And it was a good part of the count to go on, two and two pitch. Runs to three and two now to Taylor, and a base hit could cut the Texas lead in half. up back out of play and it holds at three balls and two strikes I think that's what makes this A&M team so tough we sometimes talk about the hitters and the way that they can score runs with their RBIs in the long ball but you forget too with Thompson and Knobloch they can also run they've got a lot of speed a very versatile A&M team well 122 now stolen bases on the year Runner will go to third, but Bethay should make the play, and there is one man down. <laughs> got it right off the handle of the bat, but got it far enough up the middle where Thompson could advance to third base. No chance to get him. So the Aggies have the second run sitting over there about 90 feet away with only one out. Bill Buffet electing not to bring the infield in. He would play for the out to give up the run here. They want to try to avoid the big inning from the Aggies. Hard bounder will one hop to the second baseman and they will do just that. There's the out. But the run comes home and it's 3-2. With two men down, Byington will come to the plate. And Texas still clinging to a one run lead here in the top of the third. Turner misses with ball one. And it's one ball and no strikes. Liner to Bethay will in the inning. In the third, the Aggies score two runs. They did it with two base hits. There are no errors, and nobody left on. We go to the bottom of the third inning. It is now Texas three and Texas A&M two. Championship ball game in the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament. It off for Texas, and let's look at some first inning action when Butcher was a big play man for Texas. Well, he's been having a sensational tournament. Allen was having trouble throwing strikes, put it right down the pipe, and Butcher put it over the head of Thompson into right center field and almost got it out for a home run, and Texas got off to a good start. In fact, uh, they've only, I think, they've only been able to get Butcher out, what, four times in the whole tournament. He has had some great swings. Butcher with a double in the first inning now will step in against Anthony De La Cruz, the reliever who replaced Ronnie Allen in the last inning, and there's a strike on the outside corner. You know, you get Cruz into, came in and got Bryant. Yeah, you get into one of those grooves, Bill, where everything you see looks like he's throwing a softball up there, and that appears to be what Butcher is doing right now. Oh, one is upstairs, and it is one ball and one strike. Taylor Cruz has been in 16 ball games, has a six and one record for the Aggies, high ERA of 4.85. Has given up eight home runs. Back on the screen from Butcher. And it is one and two. In fact, he leads the Aggie Ball Club in home run surrendered. AM has hit 80. Its pitchers have surrendered 36. The Aggies are 54 and 5 in 1989. And rank number one right now in both polls. Butcher fly ball to center field. Thompson loses it for a minute. Now we'll come on and make the catch. It's that time of night, isn't it, where it's a little difficult. See him looking back? It's hazy where he is looking into the haze where the sun has set, but it's very hazy behind the lights, and it's difficult right now to pick the ball up. And remember also the shirt sleeve crowd also behind home plate, and it's a little tough. Still just a light bluish cast. 
when the ball gets up in the air as that did. Clay King, the batter for Texas, takes way inside from De La Cruz. How would you like to be facing Nolan Ryan about right now? <laughs> With a pitch like that? <laughs> Jackknife would not be <laughs> good enough. There would be a better word for getting out of the way. Foul ball from King, and it's one ball and one strike. De La Cruz has a nice fastball. It seems to be moving pretty well for him. And he throws it with pretty good velocity, but as we told you about his stats, it's sink or swim with De La Cruz. He strikes you out or he walks you, and he's given up the most homers. He is a key. If Texas A&M is going to go anywhere in the regionals, they really need to get some pitching help from their bench. There's ball two, and it's two balls and one strike. Scott Centala has been their ace reliever. And beyond Centala, they really have struggled coming out of the bullpen. The numbers are good, but the effectiveness when they have had to be called on in key situations has not been. Ground ball to Knobloch. And there are two down. Boy, you got to like that Knobloch. He is smooth around the shortstop position. Carries a good bat. It's going to make somebody a fine professional baseball player. Just a junior, but certainly likely to sign as the pro scouts are really looking for it. Comes from one of the first families of baseball in Texas, too, the Knoblox. Craig Newkirk granted to the pitcher his last trip. And Ayla Cruz is down for ball one. It's one ball and no strikes. Bottom of the third. A 3-2 Texas lead after the Longhorns led 3-0 in the bottom of the first inning. A&M with two in the top of the third. Crown ball. Knobloch with a great stop. Long throw across, and he got it. Big time play for Chuck Knobloch to get Craig Newkirk going down the line. And the third inning will end with no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left for Texas. A defensive play is a great one. There you see the numbers as we go to the top of the fourth inning. And let's take a look at the play that ended the third inning for Texas. I tell you, that's why the pro scouts are so high on him, Bill. Watch him again. Knobloch gets down, gets dirty, and gets the runner. We go to the top of the fourth inning and back to the microphone, the sports director of HSC, Mr. Bill Worrell. Thank you, Bill Little. And getting it underway in the top of the fourth will be Eric Albright. Fine young catcher for Texas A&M. Came into the game hitting 339 on the season. Slow curveball by Trent Turner for ball one. Albright in the tournament is red hot. He has 11 RBIs in the two games. Five of nine for 556. And a strike call. First time up, he grounded into a fielder's choice. Eventually was wild pitched around the third base, but did not score in the second for the Aggies. Texas with a three spot in the first. The Aggies with two in the third. And that's where we stand. was redshirted last season Bill and he's really been uh, the Californian has really been a big factor in this season there's a shot out to shortstop and Bethay makes a great play so we have seen already early in this game some fine plays by maybe two of the best young shortstops in the country well I tell you the afternoon ball game when we saw Rod Stillwell of Arkansas too you've seen some really good shortstops in this tournament and you take a look there at Bethay, who ranges well to his left to make the catch of the line drive. He now has two straight plays, one against Byington and one against Allwright. The Aggies are starting to get some good swings on Turner. Andy Duke, the hitter. Strike call inside part of the plate. Duke with a 365 average on the season, 53 RBIs, eight homers. He walked in the second inning. 
another one of the veterans in this A&M lineup. In fact, all season long, Mark Johnson has not had to change it very much. He's had the spots one through eight pretty well set. They just need to know who's going to bat ninth and uh, be the designated hitter. And when you have your designated hitter as your ninth batter, it says an awful lot about your ball club. It really does. So Turner is able to get the corner of the plate on the first pitch inside. Got the outside corner on the second pitch, and he jumps ahead now 0-2 on Andy Duke. Way up in the air, should be no problem for Taylor. Bryant has gone in to play in right field for Texas. All right. So that would mean that the Longhorns have put Bryant in the lineup. We didn't get that uh, announcement. We have not had that change yet. So Bryant now out in right field and been very few occasions where we've had a three up three down inning. Just had one. And the hitter is easily. Lined out to Bethay in the second. 354 hitter for the Aggies. Oh good pitch. Curveball easily was way ahead of it. And the count is one and one. The thing about this Aggie ball club, and you go back through the season, and you just don't know who's going to rise to the fore and take charge for them. In the last inning, it was the freshman Trey Whitty who came with the double that started the two run rally for AM. At different times during the year, this laden offense has really done the job. Strike call and Turner getting ahead of the hitters in this inning. He's now ahead one and two on the count. Easily out of Baytown Sterling High School went to Lee Junior College. One of the team captains for the Aggies. One and two pitch by Turner. He got him. Strike three call. Three up and three down inning for Trent Turner and the Texas Longhorns. And we go into the bottom of the fourth. The score, Texas three and A&M two. Eric Albright is the all-conference catcher. Well, anybody that has seen Hinojosa in action these past several seasons for Bragg Stockton will tell you one of the steadiest hitters in Southwest Conference. He's going to break a lot of records. Anthony De La Cruz will be, he's pitched an inning and a third now as he heads into his second inning of work. Gene Taylor will be leading it off for Texas, and apparently, since he has stayed right there in the lineup, Bill, uh, you had a pretty good observation on why they may have moved Bryant out to right field. Bryant is in right, and Taylor now the designated hitter, and what may, what may well have happened is his arm may have tightened, and he felt that uh, by sitting on the bench that his shoulder was tightening, having played in the ball game earlier today as the pitcher. I rode back to the hotel with Bill Bethay and Curry Harden and Bryant, and Bryant said something about being in right field. So De La Cruz with two early strikes on Taylor. Taylor set out last year after transferring from Texas A&I. He was on a football scholarship for the Avalinas. Well, he never really went to A&I. He signed to go to A&I as a football player, as a wide receiver. And then elected, no, he said he'd come to Texas and play baseball, and then realized too late that you can't do that. Once you sign a letter of intent, that stays. Good job of pitching by De La Cruz, and he gets his first strike out of the game. And watch this breaking pitch. It really fooled Taylor. Taylor's big problem in fall training was he did strike out a lot, and on that one, you're exactly right. The breaking pitch just simply fooled him. Steve Bethay, the shortstop, 259 hitter, but he got a lot of production out of that. Can hit the long ball occasionally at three homers, 28 RBIs and was tied for the lead in the team this afternoon with 57 walks. Here's another family. We're like father, like son. Assistant coach 
Bill Buffet coaching over at third in the absence of Cliff Gustafson. And Bill was an All-American at Texas in 1963. Might report, Bill, that Janie Gustafson did have surgery this morning, and they did feel that it was successful surgery. Coach Gustafson home with her at the hospital watching tonight's ball game. That's great news. The lovely lady. Ball hit out into center field. Good reaction, as you see, by Kirk Thompson for out number two. Thompson gets a break on the ball about as well as anybody. We saw Scott Pose this afternoon, the Arkansas center fielder. He's quick as a cat also. You know, you just go position by position in this tournament alone, and you see why the Southwest Conference has three of the nation's top ten ball clubs. Lance Jones has done a good job in center for Texas. Pose you mentioned. Thompson has had an all-conference type year. Doug Pettit, youngster out of Houston Deer Park, hitting it from the left side. Prather had a very hot and long afternoon. It's been banged up. And, of course, he's one of the great stories in college baseball. It's been a tough year and a half, two years for that young man, Prather. Well, it was a year ago, this tournament, that Prather underwent surgery for cancer. And went through chemotherapy, had more surgery in the summer. But right now feels very positive about the way things are going. Had to battle mononucleosis early in this season. He's had some knee problems of late. But Bill Bethay electing to go with the freshman Pettit and saying that uh, he was going to go with Pettit until it got cooler and then added a dash if it ever gets cooler. So <laughs> we may yet see Prather in the ballgame. Well, after all of what Prather's been through, bottom of the ninth pressure won't bother him, will it? And he has been hitting the ball well in this tournament for Texas, despite the fact he's still below 200. Prather has five hits in the tournament. The count on Doug Pettit, two balls, one strike, two out. Bottom of the fourth inning. One run game. De La Cruz has come to the rescue of the Aggies. That time it was a little low, and the count runs out to three and one. And that's right at the letters for a strike call, and the count goes full at three and two. This is the fifth game that I've seen the Aggies this year. And I really believe that De La Cruz so far has looked as good as any reliever that Mark Johnson has brought in. Yes, it is. Strike call at the letters. Three up, three down inning. And now the game's starting to move along as the pitchers are settling down. One, two, three for Anthony De La Cruz and the Aggies. And we go to the top of the fifth with the Longhorns up by one on HSE. And we'd like to welcome our friends in the regional sports business who are joining us for great Southwest Conference baseball action tonight, especially our friends in the Prime Sports Network joining us live in the Rocky Mountain region. Also the Sunshine Network in Florida, Prime Ticket in the Los Angeles area, and the New England Sports Network in the Northeast. We hope you're enjoying the action on Home Sports Entertainment. Well, Trent Turner has already gone four innings in this one. That's the most he has gone since his freshman season. Jim Newman leading it off for the Aggies in the fifth inning. And he takes a ball. Newman grounded back to Turner, his only appearance in this game, in the second inning. Newman, a very personal athlete. Mark Johnson started 47 games last year. He played 24 of the games in right field. He had 21 at first base, and he was a designated hitter one time. There's a strike call, and the count is two and one. Brian Dare is throwing down in the warning track area. He has not gone all the way down to the bullpen. Again, the fatigue factor is hit the Longhorns, I believe, here in the fifth inning. But well, he would be available to come in. Bill, he'd already been down there. I, I think one inning he pitched from the mound in the bullpen earlier in the game when Turner was having some control problems. So he's probably warm enough to come in if they need him. Pitched 
in the Friday ball game against Arkansas to one batter. Three and one pitch. Left field. Long drive. This baby is gone. Home run, and the Aggies tie it up at three. season for Jim Newman and I go back to that statistic of each time somebody rises for a and m and this time it's the lower part of the order take a look at the swing for Jim Newman good contact hitter who has struck out only 10 times this season got it up in the air to left field and the ball carries so very well here at Olsen Field there was not a question well, you hold your breath when the Aggies are at bat. Anybody up and down that lineup can hit it out. And Newman was the man of the hour or the moment for the Aggies. The hitter now is Trey Whitty. Whitty had a double and scored the second run for the or the first run for the Aggies in this game back in the third. He got him going. All right. Hit the target, they say. Out in right center field. The Aggies have been hitting a lot of targets this season. That is the 81st home run. Whitty thought about laying it down, pulled the bat back. Well, they're going to say he went around. It's one and one on the count. of Houston Jersey Village Trent Turner on the mound for Texas still has not retired anybody outside part of the plate he really let go on that one that may have been the hardest pitch he's thrown tonight sounded so and looked so at six foot six he can be an intimidating figure on the mound coming up off that mound he's about six eight and cocks that big leg and throws it at you all arms and legs when he came to Texas, he really did not have the overpowering speed, but they felt it would develop because of his size. Going to be a tough play for Bethea as he charges, and it runs right up his arm. I think it'll be a base hit for Whitty. It is a base hit for Whitty, and it's the fourth hit off Turner. Watch it again. This is a tough play because Whitty can motor. Little chopper. And Bethay charges, and as you said, it rolled right up his arm. Took the hop and skipped up, and now Bill Bethay coming out to talk to Trent Turner. And for Turner, who's gone four innings, that may do it. He has had Brian Dare working and ready. Left-handed batting, Kirk Thompson is coming up. Taylor is a left-handed batter, and he is Dare Ruddy. Well, he took the ball from him after some animated conversation, and it looks like that will be it for Trent Turner, Bill. Officially, he will have pitched four innings, gave up four hits, three runs, walked three, and threw a wild pitch. So tell us a little bit about this left-hander, Brian Dare. Brian Dare has been one of the real consistent factors in the 1989 campaign for the Texas Longhorns. While the numbers will reflect that Brian Dare's win record is not as impressive as some. He is 3-4 and four for the Longhorns and has a 4-5 over in run average. Dare has been the victim. He was the man who was victimized in the two ball games here in College Station when Texas played here. He was not in the ball game at the time, but was the losing pitcher in both games on the fatal Sunday for Texas. Dare, in 54 innings, has walked only 12 batters, Bill, and he has struck out 61. That's an amazing ratio, isn't it? Just a sophomore from Austin Westlake. I think of him as a little Swindell. He does a good job of hiding the baseball, moves the ball very well. Pitched a great ball game against AM last year in the Southwest Conference Tournament Championship ball game. Now you realize what you're saying. You're putting a little pressure on this young left-hander. 
to well, put him in that, style. that I mean, type of okay. that. All right. In style. Because Texas, you know, Bill, what a tradition the Longhorns. Bert Hooten, Sheraldi, Swindell, and of course, uh, the, the great one, uh, Clemens at Boston right now. You can name some others, too, I'm sure, going on and on. That's just right off the top of my head. In that sense. Dressendorfer right now. What I would go quickly to say is that Dare is similar in that he throws strikes. He moves the ball and does a good job of hiding the baseball. Has the good breaking pitch in the fastball that will tail into the left-handed batters. It's got a big out to try to get here as the hitter is Kirk Thompson. Thompson grounded out in the first, singled in a run. The second run for AM in the third and stole a base. And he also scored in that inning. off first there's a hit in the left field and the Aggies really have something going now runners at first and second with nobody out Dare got the pitch up in the zone he dared him Thompson had been silent through the tournament and now back to back base hits Mark Johnson having a few words with Taylor situation here would call for a bunt but the Aggies not a team that has gone with the sacrifice very often they have 13 sacrifice 15 sacrifice bunts all season well it's the big bang theory right uh, some managers now prefer not to use the sacrifice but I know Cliff Gustafson has used it successfully for the all these many years with that great winning percentage he has some managers, if they have a hot hitting team like the Aggies, they won't bother with that bunt. Rather go for the big inning. Runners at first and second pitch is right down the pipe for a strike. Taylor walked in the first. Rounded out in the third, came into the game hitting 344 with 66 RBIs, 17 homers. Aggies with really good speed on the bases. Witty, the freshman with just three stolen bases, so has not been that much of a runner, but the guy at first can fly. Well, he thought about the bunt, squared around. The ball was low, and he took it, and the count is one and one. Ryan Dare trying to shut down Texas A&M. The game is tied at three. Tied up on a long home run by Jim Newman. Out, out of play, and the count goes to one and two. Yelling E, the fan missed it. So Dare gets ahead of the hitter. It's a big man for him to get here, Taylor, with Knobloch on deck and Byington in the hole. So the heart of the Aggie lineup facing Brian Dare. One and two pitch. Just missed. And the count is even at two and two. Big number for Dare, Bill. He has inherited 15 base runners and has allowed only five of those to score. He threw two and two-thirds inning of no hit ball against TCU two weeks ago to pick up his third one of the season. up it's going to be hit out into right field they may hold the runner at third he does with nobody out the bases are loaded for the Aggies four straight hits a home run started it off and three singles have followed and A&M has a whole lot of trouble here waiting on Brian Dare take a look Terry Taylor but good sweet swing as the pitch is up in the zone did a good job of waiting on it, didn't he? 
picks on it and puts it out to Scott Bryant, who was out in the outfield, and Mark Johnson respecting Holden, saying, hang on here. Now Chuck Knobloch, who has really not burned Texas with the bat this season, is always a dangerous threat, Bill. He had an RBI in the third on a ground out. Bases are loaded. Now block at the plate. Right field. Off the glove. They go to first. He's out there at first. Good job by Clay King, but a run scores for the Aggies, and AM takes the lead by one. Bill, we've got a problem at first base. As Brian Dare went over to cover the bag, he either collided with Knobloch or stepped on the bag, and he is down. They got the force play at second. The run scored, and the Aggies are ahead. But Dare on the coverage of first base is injured as Eddie Day, the Longhorns trainer, is out to look at him. Here comes Bill Buffet into the picture to see about him. Looked like the knee, huh? Thought for a minute when he went down he may have been cleated. Radar Ricky checking him out. The AM trainer also. And they're going to get some action going in a hurry for Texas. Todd Holtz is the man who has gone down to the bullpen. Texas can ill afford to lose Dare, who has been their top reliever. You know, we have talked about the fact that Clay King, as a third baseman, was moved late this season. Tell you what, it looks like he's been over there a long time. Knocked that one down. That was a big out to get, too, in the middle of the diamond. Well, going to take some practice tosses. Apparently caught his cleats going over to cover the bag. We didn't see it. I didn't see it. I was following the ball. Notice Knobloch talking to the first base umpire, and they were pointing back at, looked like Knobloch was pointing to the dirt in front of first base as if to say that he caught his cleat right there and fell. Runners are still at the corners for the Aggies with a one-run lead now here in the fifth. Well, you've got Thompson at third. And Knobloch at first. And John Byington, the hitter. Mr. Clutch for Texas A&M. 78 RBIs this season, 12 home runs, many of those home runs coming in crucial situations. You only, only dream about hitting one out to win a game in the bottom of the ninth. This young man lives those dreams out. Still, only one out for the Aggies. Dare is in still a big jam, and Byington will step up. Well, you got great speed on first base in Knobloch with second base open, and the freshman Pettit could be challenged. The corners with Thompson at third and Knobloch at first. Could have a little double steal. New Zealand with 65 steals on the year between the two of them. That's right. Knobloch, 35 steals and 40 attempts. Trouble with stealing is with Byington up there. Sometimes you want to let him hit it. All low. Apparently the discussion with the trainer and Bill Buffet and Brian Dare would indicate that he's okay because Todd Hoats is no longer up in the bullpen. Byington, co most valuable player in the Southwest Conference. Shared that honor with Scott Bryant. You like to see the good things happen to nice people, and Byington is obviously one of the, the nice guys in the league, too. He and Bryant have a great relationship. Following that Aggie game, Bryant went over and got him out of the dugout, and the two embraced and talked about the home run that Bryant had hit to tie the game and the home run that, hit the, that Byington had hit to win the game. Well, between them, Bill, they've only driven in 185 runs. 
<laughs> That's the long and the short of it. Byington at 5'8", but he packs a wallop. It's going to be a wild pitch, and Thompson will score, and the Aggies go up 5-3. to three. Well, when you're playing for the championship of the Southwest Conference Tournament, you'll take them any way you can get them. Let's look at the pitch, and remember now, the freshman Pettit is in, and he simply doesn't block the ball as it bounced away from it. Boy, you're exactly right. That's that's one where you've got to smother it if you're the catcher. Get over there and do everything you can to block it and keep it in front of you. Well, you know, I talked about it now with the first base open and the 3 0 count. They're going to go ahead and walk Byington to get to Albright. Frying pan and fire switch here. <laughs> well, it is because Albright's so hot right now. You'd almost rather pitch to Byington. Well, you do set up the force play. Mm hmm. Still only one out. Texas not out of the woods by any means. You remember, Bill, at the outset, we talked about the wall that I felt that sometimes you hit if you're coming out of that afternoon ball game about the fifth inning. There's a good curve ball for a strike inside part of the plate. Right as we told you, 11 runs batted in in the tournament, hitting over 500. Another good curveball by Dare. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but remember, it's a very partisan crowd. We're playing in College Station. Those were two excellent curveballs by Dare. Now he's way ahead of Albright, and he can work on it. Duke is on deck for the Aggies. AM with three runs in in this inning. Top of the fifth. Top block on second. Byington on first for AM. Albright the hitter. Dare with the 0 2 pitch. Good pitch. He swung and missed it. The runners will advance, but he is out on a swinging strike. So that's one of those rarities where you strike out a batter, but it's a wild pitch. And the runners will advance. Knobloch goes to third, and Byington goes to second. Well, and again, you see the inexperience at catcher for Texas with Prather out of the ball game because of fatigue. Doug Pettit, again, the Longhorns freshman catcher. He's not making the defensive play right there. And it'll set the table for Andy Duke. Duke walked in the second. Flied out to right in the fourth. Left-handed batting easily is due yeah, next now with first base open. That's right. That's the discussion. Who would you rather pitch to? Of course, a lot of these players, a lot of these players play against each other in the summer leagues all year long. They know each other better than anyone, and they're going to pass him by. So Andy Duke will load the bases with an intentional walk. That's the second intentional walk by Dare. Turner gave up three bases on balls. So that's five bases on balls for Texas pitching. AM has walked four Texas back. So here's Mike Easley now with the bases loaded for the Aggies two away. AM already with three runs across, leading it five to three, trying to get more. <laughs> Big curve ball hangs high for ball one. Well, I don't know if Dare is feeling the effects from the injury or what, but that time he just kind of lobbed the ball up there. He did not look in his form and delivery like the dare that has pitched so much for Texas this season. This could be the crucial part of the game for both sides. Fastball fouled off. One and one, McCown. 
Bear pretty much has to get easily here to give Texas a chance. Longhorns down by just two runs here, still in the ball game in the fifth. Bill, but if the Aggies get a bunch here, it'll be tough to come back. I have to say, too, the advantage might be in Brian Dare's favor in that you don't see a lot of left-handed pitching in college baseball. If you can get a left-hander that can throw strikes in college ball, for the most part, you got a guy that can win. Well, usually he's signed by somebody by then. <laughs> it back up to Bethay. Big hop, throw to second for the force, and Texas gets out of it. A good job of pitching by Brian Dare to give the Aggies only three runs, but AM does come up with three on three hits. They leave three on. And as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, AM has taken the lead over Texas five to three. Great spirit here at Aggie Land, and the Aggies leading it five to three. And we talked to Mark Johnson about. All of the support that his baseball club, in fact, all of the athletes get at AM. Well, it's really been a factor in our season. It really has. We had the, the true 12th man's been in the stands for us, and they've packed it in, and they've got excited. They've been breathing on every pitch with us and uh, been behind us, and they've gotten caught up in this never-quit thing either, and they don't leave the ballpark until the game's over. So they've been a, a, just a real pleasant surprise for us, and they're hooked in with us now, and uh, they've carried us through quite a few ball games. Well, I think it was a nice touch, too. Before the ball game, Derek Grubbs, the PA announcer, read the following announcement earlier today. Janie Gustafson, the wife of Texas coach Cliff Gustafson, underwent surgery to repair a broken bone in her leg. In a conversation with Aggie coach Mark Johnson, Coach Gustafson asked that we express his thanks to the many Texas A&M fans who have demonstrated their concern during his wife's illness. He added that one of the great strengths of this rivalry is that we can compete on the field and genuinely care about each other as people. And on behalf of both coaches, the thanks, and he got a rousing round of applause. So Anthony De La Cruz goes into his third inning of work on the mound for the Aggies. In case you joined us late, Ronnie Allen started. He was wild, couldn't get the ball over the plate, replaced by De La Cruz, and the Aggies have fought back to take the lead 5-3. to three. Longhorn scored three in the first. and m came back with two in the third and three in the fifth. You know, Mark Johnson really brings an interesting perspective to this series because, as you said, he's been at some of the top college programs in the country. And as Johnson talked before the ball game yesterday, he was talking about the fans and saying he hoped that they would stay excited and keep it clean. He said it would really be nice if the fans could just sit back and really enjoy a Texas A&M, Texas baseball rivalry and just watch the great baseball that is played and not get involved in uh, sniping at each other as fans. And I think he's working toward getting that done. Good pitch, three and one the count. Make him hit, make him hit that. DP fastball right here. Well, he comes from Mississippi State where they certainly have a lot of baseball tradition there. I think that Johnson was at Mississippi State in 83 when Texas and Mississippi State played that great regional in Austin that sent Texas on to the College World Series when a couple of guys played for Mississippi State named Will Clark and Rafael Palmero. Not bad. And Texas beat them with a couple of guys named Roger Clemens and Calvin Ciroli. <laughs> so there you go for the Aggies. Team totals in the pitching department. De La Cruz fell behind Lance Jones 3 and 0 but he's come back to even up the count fill it out at three and two. Jones taking all the way Texas needs base runners. Gonna be a play by Knobloch big bounce. You hit it to that side of the infield, it disappears into the big hole, doesn't it? De La Cruz had worked it into a 3 0 count and then comes back and gets him at Knob Lock with a good job. Jones just beats him, and he just beats Jones at first. David Tollison now, the hitter for the Longhorns. There's a strike by De La Cruz. Allison walked both times up, scored a run in the first. De La Cruz has been the tonic for the Aggies, hasn't he? Coming in, throwing strikes. He and is, throwing hard, too. He has retired eight long horns in a row since coming in. Slow 
Air ball hanging high. And Texas really does seem to have hit that wall both offensively and defensively where they just can't make anything happen. The bats get tired. And they just don't react the same way they did early in the ball game or throughout this tournament. There's a pitch that just missed. The count two and one. Well, A&M going into regional play. They like to start with Keith Langston, their veteran. Check this pitch again, Bill. See the location. You can see why the Aggie fans were a little upset over that one. They actually, in their rotation in the conference, used Pat Sweet to start. Yep. Langston was the big guy that they felt was their best pitcher. He's been throwing Ronnie Allen some. Scott Centella, the reliever. Deep center field. Going way back is Thompson at the warning track. Right, Tollison gave that one a ride. Had he pulled it just a little bit, it may have been out of here. It is gone in any part of the park except the one that he hit it to. Tollison has really stung the ball well. Seven hits in the tournament for Tollison. None have been hit harder than that ball right there. We have seen some long home runs so far in this tournament with the wind blowing out. And a man who can hit some prodigious shots is up there right now, Scott Bryant. He, there are your tournament leaders. And Bryant right up there with everyone else. And he's also up there in the pitching stats after this afternoon. And Bill, he's on a track to, well, he's got, what, six slugging records already at Texas. Can he break any more? Well, right now he's tied for the doubles mark at 29. One more would snap that one for it. 104 RBIs this season. 18 home runs. One and one pitch. Change up. Just missed outside. Good idea by De La Cruz. The one thing you want to do with a big guy like Bryant, keep him guessing, keep him off balance. He has had a long day. He has put in a full day's work. Two and one pitch. De La Cruz foul back into the screen. And it's two and two with two outs. Well, you looked at Bryant on that swing, and you could see the fatigue and frustration as he's talking to himself. And I should have laid off that one as the pitch was too high up in the zone. Those big sluggers like them up there, though. They, they'll go get them. Oh, just brushed him back. He was leaning out a little bit. He may have been looking for something off speed on the outside corner. And De La Cruz, come, remember the old limbo? Ooh. <laughs> it's hard to do when you've had a long day like that guy has. <laughs> some kind of athlete right back through the middle and I'll tell you what he almost undressed De La Cruz <laughs> I think he unbuttoned that top button oh boy the impressive thing if you take a look here at the pitch now watch Bryant just reach down and protect the plate drives it right back through the middle and I think you're right if he'd had a cape he'd have made a matador out of him <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got a guy like N. Cavillia at Texas and uh, a Glenn Davis at Houston. If you put an aluminum bat in their hand, you'd have to move the infielders back into the outfield or somebody would get killed. I think most folks who have seen him, and you're watching him for the first time, Bill, but uh, you probably would agree, too, that uh, it won't be long until Scott Bryant will be hitting with a wooden bat. Boy, you don't. You better know that and still scorching it. Now the hot hitter up to the plate. Borcher all the way back to the wall, and Thompson has it right before he runs into the center field fence. Oh, my. Arthur Butcher gave it a ride and almost tied this game up. But the key word is almost. Thompson makes the catch. And the Aggies, as we head into the sixth inning of play, hold off the Longhorns and lead it 5-3 on HSE. 
Newman, who started all of this action for the Aggies, is up there at the plate. Jim connected for a home run to tie the game at three in the fifth inning. And the Aggies went on to score two more and take a 5-3 lead. Ryan Dare has looked very effective. In fact, Dare did a good job to get out of that with only two runs coming in. The other run was charged to Turner. Play for Bethay. Can he get him? Yes, good arm. Bethay kept the ball in front of him and gunned him down. He really stayed with it here, didn't he? See the ball hit by Newman here, and Bethay in front of it, kind of added sachet on him, and then used the arm to get him out. Texas middle infield has been a problem all season. Longhorns have used 15 different infield combinations. Bethay last year was a second baseman for Texas. Trey Whitty is a perfect two of two on the night. Good curveball, strike one. Nice choice for the designated hitter for Coach Mark Johnson in this one. Another chance for Bethay. So it'll bring up Kirk Thompson. Has been a busy man for the Aggies. After grounding out in the first inning, he singled and scored in the third, singled and scored in the fifth for AM. A little spark plug. He really makes this club go. He gets them going at the top of the order. In that series that Texas played here in College Station, I want to say he was on base 10 times in a row. Thompson. Jeff Davis High School in Houston went to San Jacinto Junior College and under coach Wayne Graham who has such a fantastic program at San Jack. He was all conference and all region. It's like that Tom McKinney has a problem with his catcher's mask with his uh, umpire's mask. Bill, while we have a little lull in the action here, we talked about some of the great players who have played for the Longhorns a moment ago, mentioning that pitching staff. And when you look down the list of the AM greats, let's go back to 1950, back in our day. Wally Moon. Remember the moon shot? Wally Moon is the first college baseball player from AM I remember. He and Murray Wall, who pitched for Texas and went on and pitched in the big leagues, both played in the 1950s. Of course, a fellow that pitched in my day and probably one of the greatest athletes I've ever been around, Dave Elmendorf, who was, was, an all yeah. was an All-American in football and baseball here at A&M in 71 and was an academic All-American and couldn't decide what sport to play. The Rams drafted him number one, and he also was drafted number one in baseball and went on to a very distinguished pro football career. But Dave is now settled down in Houston where he's the Head of Bear Creek Golf World. I tell you, he wore Texas out his senior year in this series here. Longhorns had an outstanding ball club and went on and won the conference. Lot, he was something. Pro scouts thought he'd make it big. And there's Thompson again, getting on base with a single. So the Aggies trying to get something going after the first two are retired. That is the third hit Brian Dare has given up. Thompson, remember, a threat to go. He already has one stolen base. In the third, stole second and scored later in the inning. How many times has he been on base in this tournament? Let me give you this figure before I give you that one. I mentioned it a minute ago. He had been on base in that Texas series he was on base 11 straight times he 
really had been off to a slow start. Texas collared him last night. He'd walked once and was 0 for 5 in the ball game the Longhorns played against the Aggies last night. Despite AM scoring 15 runs, he was not a part of it. He had gotten on in the first inning and was forced at the plate, but he's now been on for three state times here. There he goes. Strike call, throw down, they got him. Good job of Brian there to hold him on. And a good throw by Doug Pettit. So it ends up being a three up, three down inning for Brian Dare. And we head for the bottom of the sixth inning with the Aggies holding a two run lead. There is someone to go along with Dressendorfer. Two years in a row now on all Southwest Conference selection. You know, Bill, a little earlier I talked about Bert Hooten really being a first in a long line of outstanding pitchers. You know, another guy who doesn't get a lot of credit because he didn't pitch in the majors, but James Street had a great senior year, didn't he, for Texas? Uh, that year he came off quarterbacking the Longhorns. He had a long streak of wins. Had a great Texas. year in 1969 and 70. Uh, 70 he had a pull muscle that shortened his season somewhat. Street had as good a curveball as I ever saw in college ball, and he, like Bobby Lane, who never lost a conference game for Texas, both of them were great competitors. Oh, I guess. In fact, Bib Falk would tell you that Lane was probably the best he ever coached. Just hated to lose. The only time he got upset with Lane was he'd go out and play 18 holes of golf <laughs> and then come out and pitch a ball game. And, Bib in an interview that I did with him saying <laughs> it's going to be in play. Who's going to take it? Will it be Easley? Yes. Easley took charge. He and Albright were headed in that direction and there was no problem. Falk on the lane story pointing out that uh, Bobby was walking 18 holes because they didn't have carts in. He said he wasn't riding a bicycle. He was walking the course. Well, Bobby never required much sleep <laughs> before football games when he was quarterbacking at Detroit. He was the early day Kenny Stabler. <laughs> Craig Newkirk. The batter now for Texas. Remember as he squared around the butt and took it for a ball. We talked about AM coming back in the last of the ninth against Texas in that two of the three games played here earlier this season. Well, remember now that Texas is the home team in this game. And it's still very close at five to three. Both teams very explosive. But right now, the middle pitching, uh, Anthony De La Cruz, has been awfully effective. And so has Brian Dare for Texas. Thompson calls everybody off. So two up and two down here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And it'll bring up Gene Taylor. Taylor flight out in the first to center field. Thompson's had a lot of chances tonight. And Taylor struck out swinging in the fourth. A little action down in the Aggie bullpen. Looks like Randy Hughes is up down there, and there's also a man. Pat Sweet is throwing down there as well. Well, as you said, there is no. I think with a lead right now, he might like to get it over with tonight. Well, he's bidding to make Taylor another strikeout victim. Taylor is having trouble with that curveball from De La Cruz. And I really think, Bill, that you see the fatigue factor setting in in the Longhorns, especially in a, a Taylor who's got some inexperience. I think the arm may be bothering him a little bit, too. He took a pitch inside in the Arkansas game, really got a bad bruise on that left arm. Oh, that just missed. Well, he is going back in this one to some old habits. He took the call third strike in the fourth inning. One and two pitch by De La Cruz way high and the count is at two two with two outs. And there you see Hughes. Hughes. Yeah. 
Sweet is not in the bullpen. He's outside and throwing on the grass area. Might just be loosening up since he threw a couple of days ago. He and Centala are both down there. Yeah, he overthrew that one. You could tell. He hitched at the top. Tried to get a little extra on it. Got outside of his rhythm. And the count goes to full. So after being ahead 0-2 on the count, Taylor has battled back. Trying to get Texas some base runners. Two outs. Bottom of the fifth. 3-2 pitch. Thompson, a busy man, comes in for out number three. A three-up, three-down inning for De La Cruz and the Aggies. We have played through six at Olsen Field and AM bidding to become the Southwest Conference postseason champion. Get together, it's usually a high-scoring affair, but tonight the Aggies holding on to a two-run lead. Anthony De La Cruz has come in to close the door on Texas, and this is the reaction of the young man when Thompson caught his seventh fly ball of the game. Four and a third innings for De La Cruz, and he has not given up a run. So here we go to start the seventh. Let's call back in to Mike's side, Bill Little. Strike to Terry Taylor from Brian Dare. De La Cruz, since coming in in the second inning, has allowed only one base runner. That was a single by Scott Bryant. He has retired 13 of the last 14 Longhorns. Big cut from Taylor, and it is a two-strike count. <coughs> Brian Dare, who came in in the fifth, and his statistics are a little jaded since he had two intentional walks during that time. He's given up three hits to the Aggies. AM's out hit Texas seven to three. Fastball is inside. So that it is one and two. That's what I say when he came in. I thought he did an excellent job to get Texas out of that jam and hold AM down because when they had the bases loaded, they were threatening to score a whole bunch of runs. <laughs> really did keep Texas within range. 5-3 ball game when you are the home team and will have the last at bat. It is an Aggie team that is used to having that advantage here at Olsen Field, but Texas is also a team that has won in the ninth inning a lot this season as well. Got Taylor swinging. Second strikeout for Dare. And the batter will be Chuck Knobloch. Drove in a run when he grounded into a fielder's choice in that fifth inning. And Dare delivers strike one. Boy, the name Knobloch in Bel Air High School is synonymous with state championships, huh? He won one while he was playing there for his daddy. Ray? He is one that will be thought of as one that got away. He committed to Texas verbally and then signed with AM. Really had a great career here at College Station. He's a junior, but I think most folks feel he will be one who will sign a pro contract after the season. The scouts are certainly high on him, no doubt about it. Everyone you talk to. Great range, good compact swing. Average at 373 on the season. And he's got as big as that number on his back. Not that he's a competitor. Strike from Dare. Speaking of competitors, and it's two and two. This has to be an encouraging performance for Cliff Gustafson. His pitching that he has gotten today. From Bryant this afternoon and from Dare tonight. He got four shutout innings from Harden in the afternoon That's game right. as well. Foul back out of play by Knobloch. And after all, a conference tournament and the criticism that it has undergone in recent years of not being a factor anymore because the NCAA bids are already out and as the basketball campaigns have shown us the final four chase is the most important part of that and you find in baseball that more and more they are moving in that same direction 48 teams will be in the NCAA playoffs eight will make it to the College World Series in Omaha and what you do in the regional tournament becomes far more important than what you did in this Southwest Conference tournament 
ball three to Chuck Knobloch and the Aggies will be hosting the Central Regional here in College Station beginning Thursday. Texas hosting the Midwest Regional beginning on Friday in Austin. Well there are a couple of different thoughts on it as you see the base on balls. It's a good tune up for a regional tournament. It gives you an idea of gives your pitchers and your players an idea of what they have to do but also it could wear a team out. Well, I'll tell you, this is Dare and Longhorn pitching tonight. This is the Texas pitching overall, including Trent Turner. Now blocked with a good speed on at first base and buying to the plate with one out here in the top of the seventh as the Aggies try to pat a two-run lead. And there's four ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Dare appeared briefly in the Longhorns game against Arkansas on Friday. I don't think they have Dare's move figured out yet. Nope. Now Block was going back when he looked over to him. And unless they have a little better idea, get a better read on Dare, they're not going to be able to steal any bases. Thompson was caught stealing for only the eighth time this season. When the freshman Doug Pettit threw him out, and Jarrett's keeping him close, had a lot to do with it. One one is down, four ball, and it's two balls in a strike. The base on Boston Knobloch is the third given up by Dare, but a deceiving figure because he walked two intentionally. One was coming on the hit and run, and Byington protecting his runner fouled a pitch that was up and in away. <laughs> it gives you a little idea of what kind of strength Byington has. Those Popeye arms. Look, that ball was way in on his hands, and he took it, and he just took the bat inside out and almost got it up and hit. Two two count and he got him picked off. No. So the second Aggie is caught stealing. The key to the move by Dare, watch, he doesn't kick back behind the rubber. See that? He just brought the leg straight up and went to first base. Completely fooled Knobloch. And Bethay put the tag on him. If you swing that lead foot behind the rubber, you have to go home with it. Ground ball and Newkirk cut in front of Bethay. And Byington will be on with a base hit. The third baseman, if he can take the play, is supposed to. But it looked as though Bethay was set to make the play. Got to be E5 here, huh? Watch it again. Now, Bethay's coming. It's not that difficult an angle for Bethay. It is scored as an error. Yeah, on Newkirk. Yep. And it will bring up Eric Albright. On the caught stealing by Knobloch, it's a one to three to six play if you're scoring. You see that slide step being used more and more in baseball by a lot of pitchers to give their catchers a better chance to throw out the runner. The quick step to home. The left hander can afford to have a big kick as long as he doesn't kick his foot behind the rubber. Dare doesn't see just brings it straight up. And by the way is only the 11th era all season for Craig Newkirk who has played at short at second and at third for Texas. Most of his ball games starting at third base. And again, the toll of the day may have had a little to do with that one. Aggie fans and the catcher Albright are not very happy about that. Funny how when you've got a catcher up there, he reacts a little differently when the umpire misses one. Yeah, what he better think about is helping his pitcher out when he gets behind the plate. I wouldn't argue too much. He'll be wanting those pitches. You say, give me that one too. Huh? That's right. He'll want it the next inning. There again.
line to first base where Clay King, who was a late night insertion in the order for Cliff Gustafson back in the TCU series, is played first base like he belonged there. Talking to Bill Bethay this morning, and he said, I don't think there's any doubt that that's the position he should have been at all along, and he has never played there in his career. Popped up out of play by Albright. And it will move to one ball and two strikes. We are in the top of the seventh. The Aggies with a 5-3 lead over Texas. Longhorns took a 3-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning. But A&M with two in the third and then three in the top of the fifth took the lead. And Brian Dare trying to hold the Aggies right there with two out here in the seventh. One, two, Jass misses outside and it evens at two balls and two strikes. There with that good move to first could really nullify a lot of speed teams later on in the regionals. It's awfully difficult to get too far off first base. 2-2 two -two is a little bounder to Newkirk who will field it and falls and got him. In the seventh, there are no runs. There was a, uh, there was, there were no base hits. There was an error, and there was one man left on base. We will go to the bottom of the seventh inning, stretch inning for the home team Longhorns in this one. Aggies with a 5-3 lead. If they can hold them, they'll win the Southwest Conference Tournament Championship. And here, who handles the PA for the Aggies, and he has really been a part of this baseball resurgence here. Derek Grubbs during a home game for the Aggies is very, very partial for the Aggies. Does a good job for the home team. And you get a look there of Didi. Just got through leading the take me out to the ball game. And in this. I like his bodyguards. I'll tell you, <laughs> in this conference tournament, he has done a very good job of being fair. He's played both teams fight songs each game. Seems a little strange to hear Texas fight and the Arkansas fight song in College Station and games uh, involving contests against the Aggies. But you have seen it there as you get a look at Mark Johnson, the young man who has done such a good job here at A&M. And you know, you see guys rise in college baseball and a lot of times as they are getting their team established, they will get a little intense at times. And once they achieve what Johnson has this year, you really begin to see the nice guys that they truly are. Which is outside for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes to Steve Buffet. What I like here at AM is when they play Take Me Out to the Ball Game for the seventh inning stretch, they have a little asleep at the wheel action. It's a natural song. It fits real well here, a hoedown. That's right. There's a strike to Steve Buffet. The Yankees with a two run lead in the bottom of the seventh inning for Texas. It is Buffet, Pettit, and Jones. The Longhorns are really. Hit some rockets off of the pitcher, De La Cruz, but he has allowed only one base hit. There have been some long, long outs. There's ball, and it's two balls and a strike. In the fifth inning, Tallison hit one to the warning track in straightaway center. Bryant then singled, and Butcher looked as though he had tied the ball game as he hit one right at the wall, but Kurt Townsend hauled it down. There's a strike call. Bill, the only thing that has really gotten either team in trouble is base on balls. If you make them hit it, you've got those eight guys behind you that can help you out, and that's the one thing De La Cruz has been able to do. Early in the ball game, Ronnie Allen started for the Aggies, walked the first three men, Butcher doubled home two, and another scored. That's how Texas got its runs, but Thay puts that one back on the screen. He hasn't walked a batter yet, has he? De La Cruz has not. Four and a third innings, and he has not walked a Texas batter, and that's, I think, one of the real keys in this game. Trent Turner for Texas, as you take a look at De La Cruz line. That's pretty good pitching there, folks, against a tired team, but a dangerous team. 41 base hits in the tournament coming in for Texas. Pitches just outside to run the count full. Texas trying to put the lead man aboard in the bottom of the seventh. They have gotten excellent relief pitching from Brian Dare. 
If they can get a couple of runs, they can make it interesting. They're the home team in the ball game, and so we'll have the last bat of the ninth. 3-2 to Bethay is a ground ball. A good flag down by Taylor who will throw it out. Oh my goodness, what a play. I'm telling you, you're gonna see one of the best college infields in the sport today. Look at this. Terry Taylor ranges to his left. Looks like Billy Doran, doesn't he? I tell you, there's the reason you have to win. And there are the scores. They gave him a 9, 9, and a 10. There's a reason in the four-team tournament, Bill, you have to win the second ball game if you're in that championship bracket. Aggies rested. They've played only two games. You cannot make that baseball play if you're tired. The fact that you can make it at all. Oh, I'll tell you, <laughs> they have done some great, great things defensively this year. They really believe in themselves here. Doug Pettit, the freshman catcher for Texas, is looking for his first base hit. You know what that does for the pitcher? I mean, you walk back up on the mound, you feel like you're six foot seven. Oh, yeah, Texas has the lead man on if Bethay is on. And in the seventh, they're rolling around to get down to a very hot Tolleson and a Bryant. Well, we have seen Byington make Byington made it play early in the game then Nabok made one in the hole later and now it's Taylor they have gone right around the horn pop back out of play from Pettit and it is one and two and that's the thing people talk about the Aggies as an offensive machine and they certainly have the numbers there but defensively they have been equally effective Terry Taylor with 11 errors, probably if you had to break it down and choose a fielder of the three, he would be the lesser. And you saw the play he just turned in. Mm -hmm. One, two to Pettit. You know, Bill, it really doesn't change. You go back to the Longhorn team in 83 and some of the great ones Texas has had defense. They used to kill you defensively. That's the thing that Bill Buffet and Clint Thomas were talking about after last night's ball game when the Aggies won 15 to 6. So if they did to us what we used to do to people. Mm -hmm. Real veteran ball club for a &M runs the count full and the Aggie fans do not like it at all. Well, they don't like it, but Tom McKinney is doing it to both sides. So he, at least he's consistent. He has a very small strike zone, and that was low. Full count now to the big freshman who has four base hits, and they're all for extras. Might have been a little too close to be taking with two strikes on you. <laughs> zone and the first base on balls for Anthony De La Cruz will send a base runner to first for Texas. That is only the second runner for the Longhorns since the second inning. Bill, what kind of speed does Pettit have? Catcher speed. Well, I wonder if uh, you might consider having a runner at this juncture of the game. Well, it's a thought, but you know, the one problem you've got in in the college game right now in playoffs, Bill, you're limited to just 22 men on your suit-up squad. He could use a reserve infielder, but once you use him, you would have lost him. There's a ball, and this one ball of no strikes to Jones. You have to dance with who brung you, huh? A couple of choices. David Lowry, who is on the suit-up squad, has a bad ankle, so, so he, he while he's one of Texas' best base runners, wouldn't have a chance. Scott Santala is up again in the Aggie bullpen. Strike to Lance Jones will even the count in one one. Jones doubled in the second inning. He's been on a little tear. He finished. A ball game against Arkansas with a single and a double. In this one, he has walked and grounded sharply to the shortstop. Swing and a miss, and it the tail away from him, and Jones was fooled. And 
is the biggest concern for Cliff Gustafson when you look at the strikeouts of Jones and Bethay, two of the guys who are not real power hitters. 44 strikeouts on the year for Jones. Boots that one out to left field. Newman will make the play. The ball doesn't seem to be carrying like it was this afternoon and in the twilight because uh, some of those shots uh, have not gone like they were going earlier. And there's Centala. So there are two out, and now Tollison, who has stung the ball every time he has been up in this tournament, has seven base hits in the tournament, and his last up, he flied deep to center field where Kirk Thompson went back to the warning track in straightaway center. And Thompson, who usually plays shallow, is now fairly deep for Tollison. This is a strike from De La Cruz. Texas trails by two runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, that De La Cruz has been a tough cookie since he entered the game. He has done some kind of job back in the second inning. Texas with a single from Bryant and a walk here in this inning to Pettit, and that's it. Pulls Tollison for strike two. Right, calling a good game too. Just a sophomore, David Tollison, working against one of the veterans of the Aggie staff, the senior Anthony De La Cruz. Breaking pitch, Jazz misses for ball, and it's one and two. And is now Texas' second leading home run man with six on the season. Had one that just slid over the fence in the Arkansas ball game and Friday's action in the opener for Texas in the tournament. One two pitch comes inside for ball. Which Texas would like to get Tollison aboard and let Bryant have a shot. Well, that's the one thing A&M doesn't want to do. You really want to pitch to Tollison here in this situation with two outs. This is the pitcher's pitch. De La Cruz wants this strike. He has struck out two Longhorns, and now Tollison will call time. Two. Look at Bill Buffet. Flashing the signals, looking over at first base where Pettit resides. such a big pitch. It's so humid down there. If a trickle of perspiration starts to come down your face or you're distracted and you don't have your concentration, you got to back out. That goes for both sides. Each pitch is a big one. What is it, everybody? Pops it up and it's playable. Albright in foul territory will make the catch. Brother. When you're good, Bill, you get the breaks. All right, <laughs> juggles the ball, but puts it away for the third out.
and the seventh is over for Texas with no runs on no hits. There are no errors and one man is left on. We are through seven innings. Texas and A&M are in a good one and the Aggies win at the conference baseball tournament champions. John Prather, the veteran, returns behind the plate. And Andy Duke will lead it off for Texas A&M. What a great name for an Aggie, the Duke. <laughs> Senior out of Baytown Lee at 365 on the season. He's been on base twice in this one as Brian Dare works here. Came in on the fifth. And delivers his strike at 0-1. Tell you what, these two pitchers have settled into a nice little duel. De La Cruz, of course, we talked about the last inning. Brian Dare is throwing very well. Very loose. Nice motion, throwing within himself. Oh, yes. You see what I mean at the outset when I said he was he was like a little Swindell. I was not trying to say he had the credentials of a Swindell. It could be one of these days. But you never the style know. is certainly there. is down. That is the third strikeout for Brian there. Well, let's watch the pitch by Dare. I I don't know what he's arguing about. That looked like a dandy pitch at the knees to me and Duke almost got thumbed out of the game. Watch it again. Yeah, that's a good pitch. Tom McKinney called it strike three. Duke said something to McKinney and I thought McKinney was going to chase him right to the dugout. Little discussion over there with one of the coaches and Andy Duke. Strike call to Mike Easley. And it's all right. I thought it was a strike, but then I'm up here in the booth, and but don't tell Andy Duke I thought it was a strike. <laughs> I think his coach just told him he thought it was a strike, or that it didn't matter what it was he thought. Foul ball. It came off the foot of Easley. It's too close a game to get thrown out of. And I'm sure that's what the coach is reminding Andy Duke. He says, we need you in the game. We don't need you in the parking lot. There's a look at Brian there. Three and a third, four hits, three walks, and an asterisk by that because two of them were intentional. Changes misses for ball one. He has been really throwing. <laughs> Easily hangs alive. <laughs> well, we have the attendance figures tonight 5,264 paid, 5,264 in the stand. It has been a good tournament as far as the attendance is concerned and a tribute to the folks here in College Station. While the students are gone, they have really supported the tournament. And a lot of the fan support that Mark Johnson has built has been young Aggie students. Well, they've got a super facility here, no doubt about it. And one up the road in Austin. A lot of regionals held in the state. You know, that the was a few years. That really was the thing I think that kind of rankled the Texas folks and Cliff Gustafson because the, the print media got into a deal that a regional tournament had to be either in College Station or in Austin. And the, the two schools were in competition for one, trying to outbid each other or something. And the NCAA baseball committee did exactly as I thought they would. They looked at the fact that. The two best college baseball facilities in America just happen to be 100 miles from each other and both can support tournaments. Well, they put them in the same state before. And they did it again this year. Mm -hmm. Tour in Florida. Right. If that happens to be where two teams that support baseball as well as these do too, put it there. 2-2 two -two now is the count to easily. Rolling along, throwing 
nothing but strikes and now he's thrown three balls in a row and this crowd may have rattled him a little bit. Now Allen. The little confrontation between McKinney and Andy Duke may have rattled things just a little bit. It was a one sided conversation though in favor of Mr. McKinney. Great pitch. Oh boy. Change curveball and down as easily. Brian Dare now four strikeouts. You know what? This young man has a dandy curveball and it's vicious on left handers. Now Jim Newman, who hit a solo home run in the fifth inning to tie the ball game. You know, Bill, earlier in the game you talked about the leadership of Jim Newman. He's way down in the order, but boy, that leadership came to the front, didn't it? When he tied the game with that homer, the Aggies took off after that. It's that one deep to center field. Back goes Jones. He is at the warning track, reaches up and makes the catch. So Jim Newman uses all of the ballpark. And the eighth inning ends for the Aggies on a long fly out. There are no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and the Aggies still in front at five to three. So the three and one. And they missed it. Well, that's a good job of not hitting by a hitter. Knowing that you have to have base runners to win this game, Scott Bryant and a lot of sluggers would have been impatient. They would have gone after some of those pitches that were questionable, but he didn't. He kind of gave it up for the team, and he's on first base, and now Texas has something going here. Well, Arthur Butcher has hit the ball solidly every time tonight, and the last time to the plate. Butcher hit one to the deepest part of right center field where Kirk Thompson hauled it in for the third out of the fifth inning. Bryant was aboard in that one. As you take a look at the Texas dugout and some of the rally caps with the hats turned backwards. Long are down by two in the bottom of the eighth. And the very hot Arthur Butcher is at the plate. He has doubled in the ball game and has driven in two runs. Nice change breaking pitch on the outside corner for strike one. Last time they got him out, they had to go all the way to the warning track to do that. Butcher has driven in 10 runs in the tournament. Eric Albright leads with a record tying 11. All one, it is even at one ball and one strike. I mentioned a moment ago that. De La Cruz has not gone this far in relief before. I think he may be tiring a little bit. One one to Butcher breaks inside for a ball. And now it is two balls and one strike. Ball on the outside corner is strike two. And now the count is even to Butcher. Might come with a breaking ball here. Butcher fights it off for a foul ball. And we will do the 2 2 again. Clay King is due next, and then Craig Newkirk, who has had a very slow tournament with a bat. De La Cruz has walked two, has allowed only a base hit. It is only the third strikeout for De La Cruz. But, but it is a big one. Oh boy, was it ever. Well, I was a pitcher late. There's that breaking pitch down and in on two and two. You got Butcher a little over anxious. Looked like 
like almost a sinker as it dived down. Uh -huh. So that'll bring up Clay King, the freshman, who is 0 for 3 in this one. King had a home run against Arkansas in the opening ball game for Texas. It's a base hit to the left side. And Texas now with two on. And it will bring up Craig Newkirk, who has been very, very silent in the tournament, and yet is a fellow who has had some tournament magic in his bat. Yeah, he's going to go get his left-hander, I think. Is it Pat Sweet? Maybe Sintala, who has or been down Sintala? in the bullpen. I believe he's going to bring Sintala, his ace reliever, to face Newkirk. But the crowd already standing, and that applause is for Anthony De La Cruz, and this place is going to go crazy when De La Cruz leaves the mound. And well-deserved it is. Clay King's hit was only the second for Texas. Off of De La Cruz, Longhorns with only four hits in the ballgame. Santala, who is coming in as you look at the hand for De La Cruz and the reaction from the Aggies. Looks like he might have a blister as he's going to the trainer to get the hand checked. Might have been just a little long for him, and that created the blister problems, but Bill Santala is a real veteran workhorse. Has not had a great deal of success against Texas until last night's ball game. Earlier in this season, he worked two innings and gave up three runs, and in fact, was the pitcher who came in when Dressendorfer beat the Aggies. Pat Sweet was the loser in that ball game, and Centala gave up the home run to Scott Bryant that tied the ball game for the Longhorns. In the third game of the series, Aggies went on to win it on Byington's home run, but on the year, he has been the most effective reliever for the Aggies. They have played this season a total of 59 ball games, and Sintala has been at 25 of them. Well, this will be, that's right, this will be his 26th appearance. That ties his appearance total for last season. And what's so impressive, I think, is the 55 innings pitched, 64 strikeouts in the 55 innings pitched, and he's given up only 36 hits. So that is a great ratio for a relief pitcher. 5 0 record with nine saves for Sintala. He uses the breaking pitch. He has had six wild pitches. He started only one ball game. Oklahoma State lost to Missouri in the first championship ball game of the Big A tournament. That was the roar you just heard in the background. So there's some upsets happening all, all over the country here early. Craig Newkirk comes to the plate now with the tying run at first base. A year ago in Fayetteville, it was Newkirk's three-run homer that ignited the Longhorns to a win in the championship ballgame. He had a grand slam against the Aggies here earlier in the season. But in this tournament, Newkirk has been very silent. He has had only one base hit in the tournament. Well, there's a big gap between shortstop Chuck Knobloch and Byington. They have moved Byington over right on the line, and look at the hole for Newkirk to hit through on the left side. Guarding the line at third is Byington. And the pitch is down and away from Newkirk. Sintala in 55 innings, 29 walks, 64 strikeouts. Pits briefly in last night's game against Texas. Almost as if to just get an inning of work. A little tune up. It's 
just down for ball and it's to an all. Newkirk likes to hit ahead. Is a good fastball hitter and has been a clutch performer for Texas in situations just like this. Centala at the belt. Breaking ball is ball three. How about that now? He, he went 2-0 and oh, and then threw a breaking pitch on the 2-0 and oh pitch. The swerve really has been one of his major pitches, and that one he just got up high. Gene Taylor, the sophomore, would be next. Fastball ducks him back out, but umpire Tom McKinney liked it for strike one. Pops it up out of play. Now the count is full. The runners are Bryant at second base and Clay King at first base. How much does Centala like that slur? Because if he does have good control of it, if it is his favorite pitch, this 3-2 might be the spot for it. Newkirk steps back out. Centala originally went to Oklahoma City University. In transfer to a &M. Five foul ball playable down the line if they can get to it, but nobody can reach it. There's a lot of foul territory here. The wind was pushing it, but not quite enough as it was on the warning track down the way. That's one thing about college baseball. He waited for that ball to come back to the infield. Rather than them throwing it out, they give it back to him. He seems to like that, like the way he gripped it. So he waited to get it back for the big pitch on three and two. A lot of concentration from Centala. Just foul. That was the breaking pitch. That's why Byington is close to the line. And Newkirk was guessing. Byington says, if you get by me, you'll have to be fouled. Linda's blowing out almost to center field now. to center field by Newkirk. Back is Thompson all the way to the warning track. He backs up and makes the catch. Tagging and coming to third will be Bryant. But Newkirk did not get around on it, and it is simply a long out. I'm going to tell you another thing. Centala got away with murder on that pitch. His catcher, Albright, was calling for the fastball inside that he had busted in. Now watch Albright. See, he's inside on the inside corner. Watch where the ball is on the outside part of the plate where he could get his arms outstretched, and he almost hit a three-run dinger. And that will bring a quick conference from Albright, who goes out to talk to Centala. And oh, Texas boy. is going to pinch hit here as David Lowry is going to come in for the freshman Gene Taylor. Lowry, the Longhorn second leading hitter, having problems with an ankle. After injuring it in the Arkansas series early in the year, he had not played until he came to the plate in this afternoon's ball game against Arkansas. And now, in a clutch situation, the Thay is going away from the young power hitting Taylor for the contact hitting Lowry. Lowry got a hit when he pinch hit uh, this afternoon. Got a single. 348 on the season for Lowry. 46 RBIs, 11 doubles, five triples, and two home runs. That wind has really kicked up now, Bill. I would imagine it's blowing about 15 miles per hour straight out to center field now. 
They fake both ways and throw back to first base, and they almost got Clay King. I'm surprised he'd even be off the bag, but he's a freshman. He's a freshman, and you got it. <laughs> with Steve Bethay do next if the Longhorns can keep it alive. There are two outs here in the eighth. Shot back into the middle. One run will score. King will go to second and hold. And it is a five to four ball game. Well, Bill Bethay dialed the right number. Certainly did. Lowry has really come through today. He's been called on twice in pinch hitting roles and he's produced both times. This one for an RBI. Watch this nice compact swing. See how he's got his weight back? Follows through. Perfect. That's why he was the leading hitter in junior college. Now he's going to test Lowry it out. trying to run down at first base. Well, he's a big run. He is the go ahead run in the ball game. He could also be a force out with two outs at second base, so he wants to be sure he can get out on the line at least in case there's a close play at the back. Steve Bethay to the plate is 0 for 3. Switch hitter from the left side against Santala. The tying run is at second with two men out for the Longhorns. Fouls it back on the screen and it's 0 and 1. I go back again to Scott Bryant leading off the inning and how important it was for him to be patient and coax a walk out of the pitcher, De La Cruz, and get on first base. And that got the rally going for Texas. One strike to Buffet. King is the tying run in your picture at second. There's the breaking pitch for strike two. been the best pitch he's thrown. Boy, that was a good one by Centala. And now he's got Bethay in quite a hole. The ultra pitch is just inside for ball one. Tell you at that particular shot in the face, he looked like Daddy, didn't he? Mm -hmm. One two now from Santana. Last second he fought it off. <laughs> Get out the chalk. That was really a pretty good job by Bethay to even get the bat on the ball. As fooled as he was, he was just able to get enough of it to stay alive. Oh boy, championship action. We hope you're enjoying it on HSE. It is down to a one-run ball game in the bottom of the eighth inning. Fastball and the inning is over. Texas scores a run. They do it with two base hits. There are no arrows and two big Longhorns left on base. We are through eight innings as we go to the ninth. It is a one run game. The Yankees five and the Longhorn four. Excellent baseball game. And we'd like to thank Sports Information Director Alan Cannon and the entire athletic department here at Texas A&M University for their help and support in preparing for today and tonight's telecast. Also, the Southwest Conference officials, Bo Carter and Kevin Lennon and Alan Archer. Also, Dave Saba of Texas, Bill Rogers of Arkansas, and Mark Cohen of the University of Houston. Well, here we go to the top of the ninth inning, and Trey Whitty will lead it off for the Texas Aggies. Ryan Dare working into his fifth inning. Dare came on for Trent Turner and has 
pitched excellent baseball, holding the Aggies at five runs. Oh, Woody has been a big factor in this ball game. He has started two rallies for the Aggies. There's a strike to even the count at one and one. He doubled and scored in the third, singled and scored in the fifth. So you're right. Witty has been right in the middle of all the action. Well, the job for Brian Dare is to hold the Aggies right there and hope that the Longhorns can catch them in the bottom of the frame. Oh, what a good fastball by Dare. Maybe the best he's thrown tonight. In the bottom of that ninth inning, John Prather would be coming up to start it off and then Lance Jones and David Tallison and if any of those gets aboard Scott Bryant. You remember when these two teams tangled in the regular season Dressendorfer won the first game and Texas went into the ninth inning with a 14 to 9 lead over the Aggies only to have the Aggies score nine in the bottom of the ninth to win the game 18 to 14. And then in game number three, got a ninth inning homer from John Byington to win that game in the ninth inning. So now Texas will be the home team tonight. That ball was low, and the count is even at three and two. The Aggies, on the other hand, would like to get something going here in the top. Score them a few runs. Okay. And Witte is the key man for Brian Day. No doubt about it. They'd like to take the bat out of Brian's hand if they can get some runs so it is no longer a one one a one run contest. Big pitch. Took something off of it. Swinging. And that's the fifth strikeout for Brian Dare. bring up Kirk Thompson the center fielder here is another player who has been right in the middle of all the action he has eight chances in the game in center field so he has been a busy man defensively he has also had three singles tonight for the Aggies and he scored twice right handed Chris Gaskell is down in the bullpen for Texas String almost caught the corner. The count is even at one and one. And the letters. Strike two. Thompson with a single in the third, a single in the fifth, a single in the sixth. He stole a base in the third, was caught stealing in the sixth. And the count is even at two and two. Number two is at bat. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Top of the ninth inning. The Aggies leading Texas five to four. But they had to gamble and take it on the short hop. And it stuck right in his glove. A look at it here. Thompson with that great speed. The hard bounder and Bethay on the run. Got it on the jump. Just speared it as he reached down for it. And made it look easy when it was all over. We have seen some excellent defense on both sides tonight. Well, I really go back to Mark Johnson's words. It, it is a series that is to be appreciated if you like baseball. Oh, boy, I guess. And it's Terry Taylor. Inside, the ball did not curve. Taylor walked in the first. He grounded out in the third, singled in the fifth, and struck out swinging in the seventh. Has been tough on left-handers. Now you take a look at Gaskell down in the bullpen in case he's needed. Fouls it off, and the count is even at one and one. Two outs. Bill Little will be heading down to the field here in a moment. 
if the game is over after nine, we will have interviews with the winners. If AM wins, they are the champions. Co-champions in the Southwest Conference regular season with Arkansas. And if they win tonight, of course, the champions of the postseason tournament. If Texas rallies in the bottom of the ninth to win, there will be a second championship game tomorrow afternoon. And that game will be here on HSE. You'll see it live in Dallas and delayed in Houston if there is a second game tomorrow. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Terry Taylor, here comes the pitch from Dare. And he wanted that one, didn't he? Badly. Tom McKinney wouldn't give it to him. The count now is full at three and two. Let's take a look at it. Hmm. Well, three, you can two see pitch. why he wanted it. Yes. Brian Dare with two strikeouts in the top of the ninth. Strikeout number six for Dare, who has pitched five and a third innings. The Aggie fans are on their feet, so are the Longhorns, because it comes down to the final half inning. We head to the bottom of the ninth. The Aggies leading by one. More than 5,000 here in college.